Today's broadcast, presented by the authority of the University of Georgia Athletic Association, Incorporated, may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the University of Georgia Athletic Association, Incorporated. Today's opening kickoff, presented by Lincoln Mercury and your Lincoln Mercury dealers, proud sponsors of UGA football. And now to tell you all about it, if Sanford Stadium was a car, this guy would be locked out. Here he is, the legendary voice of the Bulldogs. Larry Munson. You're right, and uh, it's not just excitement here. I started to say it might be more like passion as Tech gets ready to kick off. Get the picture wearing red, silver pants, got the white trim, red helmets. Tech's in kind of an off-color faded white uniform with faded yellow numbers. They have yellow pants, got gold helmets. Rodney Williams will kick off Georgia and Georgia Tech for 98. Long, booming, 100 miles he kicked it. And Patrick catches it just as it settles on the back end of the end zone. So we'll bring it out and put it in play on the 20. It'll be first and 10 there. Got a note here from Alan Robinson. Wants to wish his sister well, who's gone through all sorts of things. Some of them just unspeakable and still has another major piece of surgery left on the 28th. We wish her well as he does. Dogs up to the line. First down in the 20. Tech in the four, a widespread four-five setup, and they're switching linebackers back and forth in the shotgun, and Quincy's going to keep it. Got a block, 26-27, and out of bounds. Got him to the corner, and Quincy came outside, keeping all the while, did not have a trailing back, and just came out to his right and got seven yards and deliberately stepped it out. Gain was seven, seven and a fraction. It'll be second down. Georgia really blocked and had Gary in front of the quarterback as we came out to the right corner. Second down, two and a half, two and three quarter yards to go. Tick up in a tight 4-4. Four, four. Now they're in a five, almost a six. They go to Gary. Gary up the middle, first down in the 32. Just kind of burst, had a little seam in there. And got four and a half or so. Chris Edwards, the linebacker, hit him. Our offensive line, patched up or not, is Stinchcomb, Herndon, Jennings, Stargell, and Terry, as far as the inside five are concerned. First down, Georgia on the 32. Well, Landis Gary's really been a hard run of the last two weeks. He's really been a blessing to this Georgia offense, and that five-yard gain right there showed what he's been doing the last two weeks. Dogs, three men left, one man right, single shotgun. Snap, Carter out in the left flat to Michael Greer. And Michael Greer is going to throw a long bomb to Larry. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! We threw it in the flat across the field to Michael Greer, and he threw it about 40 yards downfield to big Larry Brown, who had to run for his life, and a guy caught up to run with him as they neared the 10, but he was able to step past him, and it's 6 to nothing. Hap Hines will try the extra point. Kick is up there, and the kick is good. And we're seven to nothing. We haven't even started here. Quick time. Well, I guess the dogs have been ball. saving that one for a while. 68-yard touchdown pass. Michael Greer to Larry Brown. Dogs get on the board less than a minute into the game. Let's go down to the sidelines and Lauren Smith. Lauren. Scott is difficult to tell who got the greatest reception coming off the field, Greer or Brown. And this sideline was electrified. Now you understand why Coach Nolan winning the toss wanted the ball. He had that planned. And uh, it really is going to boost the confidence of this team. And now we need to see if the defense can stop Joe Hamilton, a big key to winning this ball game. All right, the dogs will kick off. It's seven to nothing. White and Gregory are deep protect. Chad Holloman will kick it off for Georgia. Kick long, high, and deep. A yard in the end zone, taken by Des White to the 5 to the 10. To the 15 to 20, they got a little slot out to the 30 to the 35, and he'll spin him out, but he's way up around the 40-yard line. Kirby Smart, Kirby Smart grabbing him up around the shoulder pad to spin him out. And 
and it'll be first down on the 40. We got a man coming off, Quentin Davis, uh, apparently injured his leg or his ankle. He's being assisted off the field after the kickoff. Quentin Davis from the kick covering team and who plays a lot of the backup safety. All right, here's Tick now. First down, Hamilton underneath. They've lined up on a wishbone with one wideout. And their quick hand off to the second back, and we hit him behind the line a yard and a half, Joe Burns. They lined up on a wishbone, fake to the full, went to the left half, and Champ Bailey came up on the corner and knocked him down on the 39. It'll be second down and a short 11. Well, the dogs knew that uh, Tech's going to run some option. I don't know if they knew they were going to come out in the wishbone, but Georgia's ready for it. They look very prepared on that first play. Georgia Tech up to the line. Hamilton underneath. This time they move the backs out a little more normal. Three receivers, two left, one right, and now a flag comes down. And do we have a, what do we got, a substitution a thing? Illegal substitution. Illegal the substitution, the okay. The guy ran off the field late, though they hadn't snapped it yet. Check is going to take a five-yard penalty for illegal substitution. This is an ACC officiating crew today, too, so remember that. Ball down to the 34. Second down. And we're about 16 or so to go for a first down. 16 and a fraction. Tech, three receivers. Shotgun with Hamilton. He's got Wilder and Burns, both of them back with him. He brings an outside receiver in motion. And then he throws over on the right side with blocking to the running back. And we hit him on the 39. They're about four yards. Charlie Rogers, a split end, caught it. And Arantis Grant came up and hit him around the 38-yard line. We're leading seven to nothing. Flea flicker, whatever you want to call it. Crossed the field to a receiver, and the receiver planted his feet and just threw it to a tight end far down the field. Tech now is third down 12, just shy of their 39. Two backs. Hamilton underneath. Three wideouts. Hamilton gets him moving. We almost move with him. Now Hamilton dropping back. Whips it across the line. He dropped it. White. Des White. Could not hang on. It was around his knees. We were tackling him instantly. No gain. Fourth down. And now here's one of the finest punters in America. Rodney Williams. Tech we hoping, watched him quite a bit before the game. Tech was hoping to get Des White loose, get him the ball, and let him pick up the first down to Hollingshed there to make contact, and that's one of the reasons why White dropped it. Williams will punt on fourth down. Oh, my God. Whoa. 100,000 miles. Look at it. Hits on the three and then rolls to the end zone. Only 61 yards, but from where he was standing, 74. Timeout, 7 to nothing. Quick timeout. Georgia looks Georgia impressive. Bowl. A three-play, 80-yard drive on offense to take a 7 to nothing lead and then a solid defensive stand on their first series. So Georgia so far so good. They have the ball first and 10 on, the own, on their own 20-yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines and Lauren Smith. Lauren? Quentin Davis has a sprained knee. They're putting an ice on it. But Dr. Butch Mulherin told me that he might be able to shake it off and go back. Only time will tell. Dogs up to the line, four receivers left and one right. And Tech comes up into about a five-man line, almost six to match it. And now they blitz Quincy. They get him behind the line. He throws on a run, and he throws it incomplete over into his bench. We flag down. Now catch a call. They're going to call him intentional grounding. Tech came blitzing and flying in there, and Quincy got... Chase back in a big 10, 12, 13 yard circle or so, rolling off to the right and then passing, throwing it away technically over into the bench. A penalty's going to be on the dogs. Might be grounding. Ineligible man. Ineligible man. And now they say intentional grounding. They had two calls, two penalties on that play. Tech just blew in there somehow. They really had pressure on him and had three or four guys chasing. Officials still haven't uh, stepped anything off. Let's see. Well, if they take the grounding, I think that's a loss of down too, isn't it? Man, they're bringing, they're bringing the ball 18, 19 yards back behind the line. 19 and a half yards. They penalize us back to the half yard line. I don't understand the stepping off of the penalty, but we'll try to find out later. 
Well, I believe the uh, the intentional grounding is is stepped off from the point of the foul from where the quarterback throws it, so that's why it's so far back towards the uh, goal line. So we're almost all the way back in our own end zone. And it's second down, and we're on our own foot and a half. Shotgun. Quincy's in the end zone looking. Whips it in the middle. Complete on the 17, 16-yard line. He hit Tony Small slanting in, so he got 16 yards back. Not anywhere near enough. Cameron, a linebacker, hit him. And remember, the penalty had been 19 and a half. Plus, they lost the down, so they're going to come up with about a third down and still on third down and 14 in the ball on the 16-yard line. Atlanta Journal-Constitution has Virginia Tech leading Virginia 3 to nothing in the first. Dogs up to the line. Three wide outs, two left and one right. One running back back with Carter. Tech acting blitz. Carter back looking and it's deflected at the line and it is incomplete. A lineman got his hand on it back by him and so we'll have to punt it away. Uh, Felipe Claybrooks was right there in his face and if that's not tip that's a completion to Champ Bailey. He had his man beat on the out pattern over here on the near sideline. Claybrooks a defensive end 6-4 got his hand on it hit it hard and we've got to punt it away with Wincott. Tech's deep man is Charlie Rogers. Tech loads up the line to come after the kicker. Cop kicks it. Short but spiral ball. Hits on the 43. Coming up around the 50 and going out of bounds. And Tech will have excellent field position around the 49 after a 33-yard punt. And time called here. Dogs lead 7-0. Quick timeout on the Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. When time comes in, Tech will line it up on the Dogs' 49. First and 10 and trailing 7 to nothing after that trick play that we pulled so early on the third play of the game. Tech breaks two receivers out and goes into an eye. Hamilton underneath. We're in a five-man front, frankly. Tech with the fullback sliding in motion. Fake bootleg out to the right. And we bat a ball in the air. We bat it twice. In fact, he almost caught it himself. Kirby Smart batted it. Hamilton almost caught it himself. We batted it back on him. We threw somebody in off the corner on that quarterback and batted it. Kirby Smart batted it up in the air and realized the ball was up there somewhere, wanting to turn around and find it. Hamilton almost did, but incomplete pass. Second down. 7 to nothing. Georgia leading early. Texan a wishbone again. Only one receiver. Dogs in a 4-4. Hamilton, fake fullback, pitch it outside, gets a block, and we're going to hit him around our 43, but about six big yards. Charlie Rogers, part of the wishbone, came outside with that option. Hollinshed had to hit him first. Mann hit him second. And Tech's going to have a very crucial third down here because you see today everything is crucial because everybody expects touchdowns at any moment and touchdowns just piling on touchdown. Ball on the 43, third and four. Tech three receivers left. Shotgun with a back back there with him. Now a slot man in motion for Tech across the field. Snap to Hamilton. Throws over the middle and it is complete smart hit him. From where we are, he had a first down before he went down. Des White coming back across, got hit, and I think he made it by a yard. Dumped it right over the middle and got himself on the play, the necessary five. He got about five instead of the four. First down, the ball is an inch or two inside the 38. Well, Georgia had six defensive backs on that play, but Tech got in that middle zone, dumped it right underneath. Three wide outs, two left, one right. Tech and an eye. Tech trying to drive here. Run that option. He keeps it. He comes out to the corner, and we hit him. Knock him down on the 34. Hollinshed was one of the men. Grant was the other one, the linebacker. Hamilton had a trailing back, but didn't pitch it. Pause for station identification on the Georgia Bulldog Network. Get the Hawks, Dogs, and Braves right here on News Talk 750 WSB. Atlanta's news, weather, and traffic station. Depend on it. Tech fighting off little pieces coming down the field. They're on our 34. Second down, maybe six and a half. 
Hamilton fakes back to throw. Lots of time. Going to run out to the right side and then cut in, and we hit him around the 30. But he got about four at least. Dustin Lucky, a young linebacker. One of the men hitting him. Grant was there. Stroud partially blocked, reaching for him as he went down. Ball just shy of the 33rd, down two and a half. Seven to nothing, Georgia leads. After the long flea flicker, it went Carter to Greer to Larry Brown. Tech needing only two and a half yards. They unbalanced the line to the right. One back. Hamilton takes and drops back. Hamilton throws out of the left flat, complete behind the line, and he's down to our 25 and out of bounds, Joe Burns. That freshman running back who was open out in the wide left flat, he dumped it over there, and he picked up on the play about five or so. Apparently got it at the 24. Tech coming down. Seven to nothing, Georgia leading. 8.09 to go in the quarter. Tech up to the line. Split two men, one wide, one shallow. They are in an eye. Hamilton underneath. Hamilton moves the fullback and hands to the tailback. They open a hole, and then we hit him on the 22. Got two and a half yards, maybe. Holland should have had to hit him. That's Joe Burns, the freshman running back again. It's going to be second down, about seven and a half, maybe. 7.54 to go in the quarter. Dogs lead seven to nothing. Georgia Tech on the dogs, 21 and a half, and they have to get to the 14 for a first down. Tech, only one receiver. They go on a wishbone again with Hamilton underneath. We bring a fifth man up in the line, and Hamilton decides to call time when he sees the defense. Time called by Tech. Seven to nothing. Quick timeout on the Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. Got hit right there. Had a quarterback draw with a hole at his right tackle. Not a straight-ahead sprint draw. Slanted off a big hole at right tackle, but Hollinshed closed it. Tech is third down and six. Boy, Hollingshed's really having a solid first quarter. He's already been on it in about five tackles, and we've only gone eight minutes into the game. Tech third down on our 20. 6.55 first quarter. Clock running less than that. Seven to nothing. Dogs lead after that early thing we pulled. Three wide out shotgun. Hamilton hollers at the center, takes the snap. Fires a bullet. Complete. He dropped it on the 11. A low pass to Mike Sheridan's knees. He curled around on it and dropped it fourth down. Speaking of Mike's, I want to thank Mike Johnson, who sent a couple of boxes of cigars up here, by the way, well before the ball game. And, I mean, they look like they came from Tampa. And maybe an armored truck. Chambers of Tech will try a field goal. They will be held on the 27. 7 to nothing. They set it down, and the kick hits the bar and falls down. He hit a funny line drive that was sailing funny, not end over end, not high at all, and it just splatted off the bar and fell down. And old lady Luck smiled a little there. And the dogs will be first down on the 20, and Tech did not get any points out of it. Yet we had a reasonably short punt. And we hit because of that long penalty, and we had set him up in business on our side of the 50. Gary and Bradley, two running backs in. Dogs with the ball. Dodged the big bullet, or did we? 6.33 in the quarter. Fullback leans forward to get the play from Quincy. Quincy stops, runs the option, pitches it out to Gary, who's trapped at the corner. He pushes and gets two yards out of it. Cameron, the linebacker was the guy hanging on to him. We couldn't get a block on him. Lauren, what do you got? On the sideline here today, Heinz Ward of the Pittsburgh Steelers and Randall Godfrey of the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, we might get a word with them before the game is over. Heinz is already complaining, shaking his head about that call Thanksgiving Day between the Steelers and the Detroit Lions. Seven or nothing. We're on our own, 22 and a half, suck it down, seven and a half. Tech's almost in a five. They are now. Quincy steps back to pass. They chase him behind the lines. His pass is thrown out of bounds. Did he throw it away again? No call. 
they had pressure on him again. And whoever he's looking for over on the right sideline, he has to throw it high and away. And Kreisen, the nose tackle, was coming on him pretty tough. Well, he did throw it away. Michael Greer was the intended receiver, but uh, Quincy knew that he wasn't going to be able to drop it in there, so he did the wise thing and just chunked it out of bounds, but in the direction of Greer. They put the ball forward a half yard. We gained a half yard. Third down and seven up on our own 23. Tech in a 4-4. Now a linebacker steps in at the tackle. Snap on the shotgun to Quincy, and Quincy fires a bullet. Diving catch by Champ Bailey on the 32-3. Might be a first down. He came back diving with Bostick, the cornerback, on him. He threw it low, and Champ had to dive for that ball, but did, and it'll be a first down. Journal Constitution says that Virginia Tech is now 10 to nothing on Virginia in the first quarter. 7 to nothing here. Dogs lead early. They have two tight ends, Brown and Wiggins. Would pull that trick play early right away. Two plays in the first down, and the third down, there it was. One back. Two tight ends, two wides. Quincy starts left, stops, goes back to the middle. Throws, complete to Greer on their 47. They hit him right away. Was Greer hurt? Greer on his back. He's not up yet. Clark, the cornerback, on him right away. Greer slow coming up. I think it may have just fallen on the ball, maybe knocked the wind out of him for a minute. He's going to step out of the game. But a fine catch by Greer in tech yeah. territory. Ball on the Georgia Tech 47. Dogs lead 7 to nothing. 5.30 clock running first quarter. We're that early in the day. Slot wide left. One back back there behind Carter, who's underneath. Texan a 4-4. And we give to the back. Gary at the left guard trying to turn his body in over the 45 to the 44. Maybe three, but that would be the most. And Cameron, the linebacker, on the stop. Dogs lead 7 to nothing. If you joined us early because you were some strange place on the third play of the game, we threw it in the flat to Greer far across the field, and then he threw it 40 or 50 yards downfield to the tight end, Larry Brown, who took it on in from there. And it's still 7 to nothing. 4.49, clock running, two tight ends, two wide outs only, one back. First quarter, Tech comes up to blitz everybody. Quincy looks fires and he misses the tight end on the Tech 37 running left to right and he was open but Tech had pressure on Quincy Carter at the last moment they had a lot of guys six of them trying to come in on him going to be third down now and they are on the Georgia Tech 44 Champ Bailey back in and Gary the running back came out dogs lead seven to nothing Third down, seven. Counting the tight ends, three receivers right and two left as both tight ends are standing. Snap to Carter. Back to throw. Down the middle, and he missed him incomplete. Off his hands of Wiggins coming across the Tech 35. Cameron, the linebacker, trying to catch him. They've got some pressure coming up that middle. They're pushing on him a little. And it's going to be fourth down and seven now, and the dogs haven't been able to do it either, and we'll have to punt it away. Tech safety is Charlie Rogers, who's had more than one long touchdown return this year, by the way. They've had a very successful return game. Wincop will punt. So Tech's going to put some men on the line. Fourth down, seven. They don't rush him. He kicks a high, high, good, lazy spiral and Tech fair catch on the 11-yard line. Cop got his foot under there well. A high spiral, 33-yarder only, but good and high. No possible return. And Tech will line it up there. Lauren, what do you got? Greer is okay, Larry. He's got a uh, just a little bruise, but he'll be able to go back. Butch Mulherin says no problem. Seven to nothing. Georgia Tech going to put it in play on their own 11-yard line. Last time they started on our 49. Tech, Hamilton underneath. Baxter in an eye. First down. They go to the tailback, and they open a hole, and they drive it up to the 14. Phillip Rogers, a big junior, weighs 220. They went into our tackle on the right side. Leroy and Holland shed on the stop. And the ball is going to be marked on the 14 and a half. 
And it will be second down and about six and a half. They have to go to the 21. Ball on the 14 and a half. They're in an eye again. Fullback shifting run motion. They give it to the tail. He cuts in and he came across to the 19 before we could push him back and they're all still pushing out there. They had a good push in the middle. Philip Rogers, they ran that big back right in the middle. Arantis Grant and Holland shed the linebackers trying to help the middle of the line. Tech really had a good push from King and Page and Key right there in the middle. And the ball is going to be marked on the 20. Third down now, only a yard and a half for a first down. Tech with a football just shy of their own 20. Tech. Shotgun, three receivers. They got two backs back with Hamilton, who's hollering at everybody. He takes it, then he pitches it to a back who got him out to the corner for 10, 15 yards. He broke off to the 40. Rodgers all the way up to about the 49. A sudden option pitch out to the right. Hamilton made no mistake about that. He pitched it immediately, and the play came all the way out where they'll spot it near the 48-yard line. Well, that's their versatile guy, Charlie Rogers. He lines up as a flanker, and he runs out of the backfield. He's the third leading rusher on the team, so he definitely runs the ball a lot and plays just like that one. Somebody had him dead way on the 35 from behind, and his hands slid right down his legs, and he missed him. Tech first down. Hamilton going to pass complete to a man open on our 42. Goes to the 39. Mike Sheridan open. Jeff Harris had to hit him. Hamilton threw a perfect strike about 13 yards and a first down, and here comes Tech down the field again. Georgia had just kicked him in a hole down in their own 11, and Tech has gotten out of that hole quick. They are on the dogs 39. Georgia still leading 7 to nothing. We're still in the first quarter. Tech up to the line, three wide out, shotgun. Hamilton behind the line with the back. He's going to keep it and come outside by himself. Ran right by the corner and got to the 36 and out of bounds. Grant, one of the men running him out there. And Antonio Cochran also running him out. He took a short snap up close that time off the shotgun and then just sprinted to the left and got it to the 35 and a half. Got almost four yards, second down. Tech is getting a lot of yardage, by the way. Now, they've gotten a lot of yardage all year. Seven to nothing, Georgia leads. Play who had gone out of bounds to stop the clock. Better than two minutes in the quarter. They're in a wishbone. Fake the full, pitch it outside, give him a block. And Charlie Rogers is to our 28, I think, in the first down, and there's some shoving up ahead of the play. Blockers on the secondary. Harris hit him, and Holland should hit him, and let's see. It should be a first down. Where will they spot it? They are working on our perimeter, on our edges, as coaches will tell you. Witherspoon coming in the ball game. Holland should coming out for a moment. He's made a bunch of tackles this first quarter. First down, Tech on the 28. Late in the quarter, Tech's down here again, and this is the second time they've come down here. They're in a wishbone. Two tight ends, one wide out. We're in a five, and he keeps it. He bootlegs to the left. Hamilton throws, and we intercept on a rolling diving catch. Jeff Harris somewhere around the 15-yard line intended for Des White. Harris read it and dove low behind the receiver and intercepted, and we save ourselves again, and we're on our 17 and a half. Dogs get the ball back. Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Virginia Tech 17, Virginia nothing, first quarter. Dogs get the ball back. Tech was just coming down the field, working on us in many different ways. Now we get the ball back, though down in just about the area where we've been so far this afternoon. Minute and 29 in the quarter. Two wideouts left, one right, shotgun to Quincy, and we pull some linemen and we run him to the corner, and he dives over to the 21. We had blockers. We couldn't get him all the way out. Bostick, the cornerback, came up and got his feet out. Ball be up on the 21. We got maybe three. It ought to be second and seven. Bailey back in, and Thaddeus Parker out. 
Ball on the 21 and a half. So technically we gain three and a half, seven to nothing. We're still leading less than 60 seconds in the quarter now. Quincy with one back behind him, three wideouts. Texan a 4-2. Carter takes it. He's back to throw, and it's batted and incomplete. Our receiver tried to dive back, so did the defender. Somebody hit it right in front of his face. Carter back to throw. That's a second one they've hit, and it'll be third down. Hit by Philippe Claybrooks. That's his second one. That one end has hit two of them. Dogs back on their 21. Third and seven behind Probably yardage-wise, though that first big play with Greer to Brown was something. Now, a lot of yards on that one, 68. 47 seconds, leading 7 to nothing. Three receivers left and one right. Shotgun to Quincy. Quincy wanted a run, and they sacked him behind the line. Not really a sack. They just trapped him and wouldn't let him move. Going to run a quarterback draw. No opening, no room. A loss in the play of at least three. Watson, the nose guard, led it. And Tech read the play, and we could not move with the quarterback. And the loss takes it back three and a half yards to the 17 and a half, and we'll have to punt. Fourth down, 18 seconds ago, and we might be letting the clock just run down to end the quarter so we can kick from the other end of the field. We would like to kick it up into that sun, is what I would be guessing. Seven to nothing, only one touchdown in the first quarter, men. But how many are we going to see in the second? Time out. These words on the Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. The Cavaliers don't like each other none either. Much like the Bulldogs and Yellow Jackets, and the same can be said for the Tar Heels and Wolfpack, except they decide to keep that one in the state boundaries as well. The Heels and Pack are playing in Charlotte, Tim. First neutral site meeting ever in that series. First time since the 40s that the Tar Heels have played in the Queen City. But they're playing in that glitzy home of the Carolina Panthers down there, kind of like us going to Baltimore and getting to play in that lap of luxury. Great uh, stadium, and Torrey Holt, a uh, great flanker for NC State, and Jamie Barnett will go against an improving North Carolina football team, and North Carolina started out slow, lost their first three games, but uh, have come around and I think gotten a little better each week. Well, in a, in a chance, it seems an outside chance, although uh, Virginia going to the Peach, NC State to the Micron PC Bowl in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale, appears Carolina may have a chance at one of the at-large bids. There's some speculation they may play in that college football doubleheader in Honolulu now that uh, has joined the Hula Bowl. I think the, I'm, I'm going to mess this up. My Hawaiian is not where it should be. Even though Waters is out there with basketball, I think it's the King Kamala Mela Bowl that has joined the Hula Bowl on that doubleheader. You're right. It's not where it should be. <laughs> when Cop is set to put it away, Charlie Rogers, Kim, has really been the star and the threat for Georgia Tech on offense so far. And the Jackets trailing Georgia 7-0 as we Charlie wait to start Rogers the second quarter of play here in Athens. This is Tech's best scoring quarter of the year, 142 of their 370 points, and it's Georgia's worst defensive quarter of the season. Snap to Cop. He'll punt it away. Best of the day. High spiral. Charlie will step up, make the catch at the 45. Marker's going to go down, and look at Charlie. Break it out. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Let's see if it stands. They're going to really signal fair catch and then ran and advance the ball. So this is going to be a delay of game type of situation. And I think this is a 15-yard penalty. If you signal fair catch and then run with it, it should be a delay of game call. So let's see what the official does here. It is a 52-yard return, but let's wait and see. And it would be John Edward Rogers third punt return for a score this year. Now, if Charlie was holding to try and shield his eyes from the sun that is here in the uh, southeast side of the stadium. Well, clearly the hand has got to get up over the shoulder pads, and the question is whether or not he didn't signal the fair catch. It appeared here, Wes, that he might have signaled for the catch and then advanced the ball. Here's Ron Cherry, the referee. Huh. It's a penalty on Georgia. No, it's going to be a double foul. That's they're going it. to re-kick? Yeah, they're going to re-kick. Offsetting penalties. The halo interference right. inside the, the uh, two-yard area. And then Charlie Rogers signal the fair catch and then advance the ball. That's a delay of game penalty. So the two should offset, I think. And they should re-kick it. But the officials, one of them is trying to mark it off. And uh, we'll see what they're going to do here. Ron Cherry? All right, 
right, so they don't re-kick. They administer both penalties, and Tex got the ball at its 45-yard line. Well, you make your own judgments on the uh, fair catch attempt. 34-yard punt is what it ends up being from Wynn Cup. So the ball at the 45 with 14.45 to go. First and 10 for Tech from there. Joe Hamilton with an eye behind him. Wilder and Burns. First down. Play action. Hamilton loads it up. Deep ball out there is Kelly Kemba. Touchdown! Touchdown! Goodness! Corey Robinson! Got lost in the jet fuel of Kelly Campbell. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Wes, what a great throw by Joe Hamilton, and they didn't do anything fancy. They just took the freshman, the true freshman, Kelly Campbell, with great speed, matched him up out on the corner that time, ran him deep on a corner uh, post pattern deep. Hamilton laid it out there with good protection. Campbell ran under it, and Tech has gotten right back into this ball game. Kelly Campbell's first collegiate touchdown reception. Chambers' point after is up, and it is perfect. Timeout on the field. 55-yard strike. Joe Hamilton to the flash. Kelly Campbell, and we're tied at 7-all as you listen to Yellow Jacket football. Game tied at 7 after Joe Hamilton tossed his 17th touchdown pass of the year, a 55-yard strike to Kelly Campbell. And Kim... You're too busy scouting White, Sheridan, Charlie Rogers. You forget all about that youngster from Mays who can run like the wind. He's got tremendous speed, and uh, he showed it that time. And give Joe Hamilton credit. He threw that ball up perfectly, put enough arc on it for Campbell to run under it, and he got him beat, uh, got behind coverage, and it was a touchdown. Hamilton now 5 of 9, passing 84 yards. Tech 148 yards of total offense on 20 plays. Georgia 131 yards on 16 plays. And big plays now, Kim, are even at one apiece. Rodney Williams will kick it away. Champ Bailey and Patrick Pass are deep for Georgia. Williams has angled it to the near side. It will hit out of bounds, and Georgia is going to get it at its 35-yard line. The Bulldogs will start at the 35. With 14-29 to go first half tie game, Georgia gets a break. Wes, when uh, Rodney gets pumped up and gets a little too quick in his kicking motion, he tends to hook the ball, and I'm sure he was uh, excited as all Tech players were after that touchdown and got into it a little quickly and hooked it out of bounds. So Georgia gets good field position up at their 35 with 14-29 to go in the second period. We're tied at 7-all. Tackle starting to nickel. Hartwell senior Brian Wilkins has come in, and Felipe Claybrooks is at the left end spot. Jesse Tarplin is the other end. Roderick Roberts working inside with Gunther Kreisen in their front four. Carter on first down, looking left, throws, caught small, 40, breaks the tackle, 45, 47, maybe the 48 for Tony Small. The senior from Jacksonville, his brother Eddie, of course, played at Ole Miss. Cameron and Wilkins make the stop. First down for Georgia, they got 13 on the play. Just did a little hook pattern, and uh, Carter looked around, checked everything, and found him open. Small broke a tackle and picked up a first down. Quincy Carter is now 4 of 10 and has 58 yards passing in the ball game. Spreads the field. Bailey and Small far side. Greer lone receiver near side. Play action to Gary. Carter looks, throws, and Greer cannot hang on in Tech territory at the 40. Diving for the football in front of Jason Boston. Second down, 10 to go. Game tied now at 7 with 13.56 to play in the opening half. Ronnie Bradley's coming in for Georgia. And they will take Champ Bailey out of the ball game. Roland Champ Bailey, who Kim May might have been better served to introduce him here on senior day today, too. This could very well be his last home game. Might well be. Small here near side. Greer and Larry Brown off the formation to the right. Offset eye, here's the toss to Gary, running to the left side. Alandis comes up, and he's tripped up. Bostic, a nice tackle. Oh, Gary, Gary falls forward into Tech territory. Pick up a three on the tripped play to the Jacket 49-yard line. But that will make it third down and seven. Nice play by Bostic coming up and playing that field corner or boundary corner position. The cornerback, Wes, has to recognize the tall sweep and come roaring upfield. If he sits back passively, blockers come into him. It's a success for the offense. That time, Bostic saw the tall sweep with Gary, came flying upfield, took his legs out from under him, short gain of three. 
Jackets get the field set defensively. Two to the right, one to the left, and Carter from a deep shotgun on third and seven, the Tech 49. Snap to him. Quincy loads up, firing deep. Bailey's out there, and it is overthrown and complete. He and Bostick were stride for stride, but Quincy Carter tried to home run ball to Champ Bailey and pulled it back. Boy, he had him beat, too, that time. Bailey did an out, down, out, down pattern and got behind Bostick, and Carter saw it. He was looking all the way for his great uh, receiver, but the ball was just overthrown incomplete. Georgia 2 of 5 in third downs now in the ball game, and Cop will come on again. 7-7 game with 13-02 to play first half. Let's see what Charlie Rogers has got in his bag of tricks. He signaled fair catch now. Once ruled a fair catch, one legitimate fair catch. Kim, let's see if he tries to spring one here on the Bulldogs. Long count, snap to Cop. Jackets trying to get after it. Tillman almost there, but Cop has hooked it. And it will hit and take a big time Bulldog bounce. Oh, did Georgia get a good bounce there out of the football? It hit it about the 20 and skipped down 11 yards to the 9. It ends up being a 40 yard punt by Cop, and we get another break in the action here in Athens. 12 minutes, 49 seconds to go in the first half of play. Tech in Georgia, knotted at 7 on the Georgia Tech Football Network. Pause 10 seconds, allow our affiliates to identify themselves today as you listen to complete coverage of the Yellow Jackets and Bulldogs here on the Georgia Tech Football Network. Will Clinton appear before Congress? <clears throat> and what's the good word? Say it with me now. To hell with Georgia. Sunny and warm, currently 68 on News Radio WGST Atlanta, Canton. Ball game tied at 7, 12.49 to go in the first half of play. The Jackets will have it first down and 10 yards to go at their 10-yard line when we resume. And time for Kim and I to tell you about tickets that are selling very quickly for Georgia Tech's third annual Music of the Seasons program at 8 o'clock on Friday night, December the 4th. This holiday program is going to feature Keith Callan as the master of ceremonies. His charm and humor, along with Tech's excellent choral groups, orchestra, and symphonic winds will make it a special Christmas program to order tickets 404-894-9600. Wishbone formation behind Joe Hamilton. Give us to Charlie Rogers, sprinting to the left corner. 15, 20, Charlie 25, smart, finally shoved him out of bounds, but up at the Yellow Jacket 37-yard line. Des White throwing a nice block downfield that helps spring Charlie Rogers for 27 yards. Well, they sealed the inside contain that time. Kirby Smart got caught up inside the strong safety, and Charlie Rogers got outside on him, and it was a foot race down the sideline. They finally ran him out, but not until he got up to the 37. 27-yard gain, seventh first down in this ball game for Georgia Tech. Tommy Barber's got Charlie Rogers four carries, 68 yards so far today. First down, Hamilton slipped, but kept his balance. Joe in trouble. Got to do something. Marker goes down at the 30, at the 29-yard line. They place the marker on the 30. Jackets have got an injured player at the 35. It's Noah King, but he is up and okay and I'm it is a hold against Georgia Tech Hamilton was struggling after almost slipping coming from under center Craig Page Antonio Cochran was the guy that wrapped him up and this is going to cost Tech 17 yards from the line of scrimmage of first team by the football riders and he becomes Georgia Tech's 44th football All-America and at a position where Georgia Tech has had a number of great All-American centers. Wilder and Burns in an eye. White left. Kelly Campbell to the right. Hamilton on first down. Dumps it out in the flat. It's caught. Burns took on Jeff Harris and took him with him to the 25-yard line. Pick up a five will make it second and 22. Harris hit Burns, but... Jeff Harris, the junior from Lack, uh, Jacksonville, who missed last spring due to some academic trouble, found out you just can't hit Joe and he go down. You got to hang on and try and make a play of it. Pretty safe play on first down to throw the ball to your back out of the backfield and hope that he can make a play in the open field. But Jeff Harris came up and played it nicely, although Burns did get some extra yardage after the initial hit. Sheridan in the slot left, Kelly Campbell wide left, and White here in the boundary at the right. Wilder out of the backfield in motion. Joe Hamilton on a straight drop off the near hash. Stepping up in traffic and sacked. Antonio Cochran, the senior from Montezuma, who played at Macon County for Dennis Rowland, makes a stop. Loss of two back to the 20 makes it third and 24 for Tech. Tech didn't put up the inside to rush. Georgia only rushed four that time, and they beat Tech's offensive line. Hamilton trying to fake and set something up, but uh, great play by Georgia to sack uh, Hamilton. 7-7 game with four minutes gone, second quarter here in Athens. 
two to the left, one to the right. Georgia crawls Grant up in a gap, now back him off. Here's Hamilton faking inside, steps up, throws downfield. Oh, in and out of the hands of Charlie Just Rogers. break for tech. you got to make those plays, and Charlie Rogers knows it. He was wide open in the middle, but obviously took his eyes off the ball and trying to think about getting the first down after he caught it. And that little uh, hesitation dropped the ball. Michael Greer deep to receive a punt from Rodney Williams, fourth in the Southeastern Conference at 8.8. Snap is high. Rodney collects. Low spiral toward the left side. It will hit and basically die at the 43, 42, now the 41-yard line. Basquin touched it up, but that was just about disaster for Georgia Tech. Timeout on the field. 10.31 to go in this first half of play. Game tied at 7 between Tech and Georgia, and you're listening to Yellow Jacket football. 7-7 game with 10.31 to go first half here at Sanford Stadium in Athens with Kim King. This is West Durham. We've got basketball later tonight from Hilo, Hawaii. Airtime at 7 o'clock. Tip-off somewhere between 7.15, 7.30. Randy Waters will have Georgia Tech and West Virginia. The Jackets won last night in overtime over New Orleans with Jason Floyd pouring in 22. West Virginia escaped Wisconsin Green Bay 64-63. So Bobby Crimmins and Gail Catlett will huddle in the second round of the Big Island Invitational. And Kim, while we got a moment, we hope folks will join us in Jacksonville, Florida at Altel Stadium on New Year's Day, a 12.30 kickoff. The Jackets go to the Gator Bowl for the first time since but you and Jerry Priestley went down there in 65 and kicked the door in on Texas Tech. Well, that was a great bowl for Georgia Tech, and that'll be a fun one this year. And I know all Tech people will join me and you and others in uh, being there. Quincy Carter in Georgia's best field position at the Bulldog 41-yard line. First down, give us to Gary, trying the right side. And, boy, what a sliding tackle made by Jamar or Jason Gary. Bostic. And a marker Gary's has come down on the back side of the play over near the Tech bench. I think there's going to be a hold call here, Wes, against Georgia. So that'll be a 10-yard penalty. The flag is dropped up there to just shy of the 40-yard line. Should put it back to the 30, and I'm sure Tech will take this penalty. Only a gain of a yard on the play for Alandis Gary. And Ron Cherry says it is holding on the Bulldogs. They'll step it off from the 40. And it will be first down. Now 21 yards to go for Georgia back at the 30. So light tech a moment ago. The Bulldogs are penalized on their first down play. Merrick Watson comes out as Brian Wilkins has come in now. Nickel package for Georgia Tech defensively. Carter spreads the field. Single back Gary. Two to the left, one to the right. First and long, Quincy booting out here to the flat, throws, caught Larry Brown, hurdled one, but then is pushed down from behind by Delonte Cameron at the 40-yard line. Right at 10, boy, what a athletic move by Larry Brown to hurdle a tackle, and he got right at 11 yards, second and 10 for Georgia. Well, he's a basketball player in basketball season, and it looked like Caldwell was going to come up and take his legs out from under him, but the big uh, senior tight end hurdled him but got pushed down by Delonte Cameron from behind. Pick up a 10, as you say, Wes. Second down, 11 yards to go for Georgia. Here's Carter. Quick drop, throws, caught small, and near a first down, and should have it at the Tech 48-yard line. A little slant to Tony Small. Bostic and Tillman make the stop. So Quincy Carter, a little look in to Tony Small in a first down. Boy, good throw by Quincy Carter that time. 13-yard gain. They just little, did a little short slant corner pattern, uh, post pattern with Tony Small, and he rifled the ball right in there and made a great catch in traffic. 9.20 to go now. Second quarter of play here in Athens. 93rd renewal of the Tech-Georgia game started November 4th, 1893. The Jackets won 28-6 in Athens. Carter on first down. Play action to Gary. Deep drop. Quincy throws the deep ball. Out there is Wilkins, and it's overthrown. Intended for Champ Bailey again, and that time missed him by 10 yards. Second down and 10 for Georgia at the Tech 47. Clark and Wilkins were there all the way for Georgia Tech, who had the play schemed well, Kim. They did. Uh, Brian Wilkins, Tech's free safety, was all back there just waiting uh, for the ball, but it was overthrown. He had a chance for the interception. So Tech had two men, Jamara Clark underneath and Brian Wilkins over the top, incomplete. Robert Arnold is coming to the game to join Alandis Gary in the backfield. Thad Parker near side, small and Greer far side for the Bulldogs. Second down 10, Tech 47-yard line. 
7-7 game here in Athens. Carter drops back. A little delay. This is Alandis Gary inside the 40 to about the 38 and 37. Still carrying tacklers. Sensational run by Alandis Gary for right at a dozen yards to the Tech 35. Edwards and Tillman make the stop. First time we've seen a Landis Gary really work through traffic there, Kim. Georgia got a drive going now, Wes. That was a draw play on first down. 13-yard gain by Landis Gary. Got a little seam. Tech was looking for Carter to throw the ball, but uh, gave it to Gary again on the quick draw. Went off the right side down to the Tech 34-yard line. 8.35 and counting first half. 7-7 game in Georgia now with its first Real scoring threat since the gadget play from Greer to Larry Brown on the opening drive. And now Quincy Carter wants a timeout. timeout. Play clock was already down inside a three, and Carter bangs the timeout for the Bulldogs. And we'll take it with them here in Athens. 8.23 to go first half. Tech 7 and Georgia 7 on the Georgia Tech Football Network. We welcome you back to Sanford Stadium in Athens. Eight minutes, 23 seconds left to go in this first half of play. Each school has used a timeout. Georgia taking one here. Best field position in quite a while for the Bulldogs, Kim. First down 10 at the Tech 34. Game tied at 7. It resulted, Wes, in a good uh, punt by Wynn Kopp, who kicked Tech down to the 10-yard line. And after Tech was unable to uh, pick up more than an initial first down, they got that penalty on a holding call that made it first and 27. They couldn't convert. And uh, had to punt. Rodney Williams got a high snap and was lucky to get a 39-yarder out of there. The Georgia 41. After Georgia was penalized 10 yards for holding to the 30, Brown caught a 10-yard pass up to the 40. Small got a 13-yard pass to the Tech 47 for first down. After incomplete, Jerry ran first down, uh, second down, I should say, 13 yards for another first down here. Georgia quickly out of the huddle. Here's a toss to Bailey. Tried to run back up the middle. He's going to lose a yard. Jesse Tarplin played it well. They snuck Champ Bailey back there. Guy does everything but pour Cokes and sell popcorn here anyway, and they let him carry the football off the left side, but Georgia actually lost the yard back to the 35, second 11. Well, they tried to fool Tech that time. They got up to the line very quickly and did the toss sweep with Bailey, but Tech had people flying over there, read it very well, and knocked him for a yard loss. Bad Parker, Tony Small will go to the right, Champ Bailey left. Gary, the lone setback just inside the near hash. Carter gives to Landis Gary. Coming left side, Chris Edwards had him, stacked him up and slowed him down enough for Bostic to polish him off for no gain. Great play by Chris Edwards. Outside backer from the other side came in, and they ran the delay to the left side away from him. But with his great quickness and speed, Edwards just came down the line and grabbed uh, Gary from the backside and pulled him down, stopped him for a yard gain. Kim, he's going to be outstanding next year, I think, for Coach O'Leary. He's had a lot of injuries, Wes, and that's why we haven't been calling his name a lot so far, but uh, I look for him to have a big year. Third and 11 now. Carter from a shotgun spreads the field. Two to the right, one to the left. Georgia, two of five and third downs. Quincy drops back in the pocket. Now, big sack! Clay Brooks sucked him back at the 44-yard line. And Tito said, hey, man, you live in the same zip code I do. That's his 10th of the year. Two guys from Decatur meeting at the 43-yard line in Athens. Two things, Wes, with a sack. It stopped the scoring opportunity for Georgia, but most importantly, they're out of field goal range. They've got to punt it here. Big play by Tech's four-man rush. Loss of eight, back to the 43, fourth and 19, Kopp will punt it away. Charlie Rogers, Charlie Rogers stands at the 10. Tex got eight on the line. Kopp angling here, high spiral. Charlie does signal clearly for the fair catch and will do so at the eight-yard line. It is a 35-yard punt by Wynn Kopp. Just a high spiral. Georgia really doesn't want to give Rogers a chance for anything today. 6.21 to go now, first half. 7-7 game here at Sanford Stadium in Athens. They spotted for play at the 9, so let's take a yard off and call it 34. Good defense by Tech. Georgia got down and uh, actually had a first and 10 at the Tech 34, but only one of the next three plays gained positive yardage for Georgia as Tech's defense stopped them. Sheridan left, White in the boundary at the right, eye behind Hamilton of Wilder and Phillip Rogers on the near hash. Here's Joe given to Phillip, left side, 15, took on a block, 20, first down, Phillip Rogers. Right at 11 yards, Kirby Smart comes up to make the stop. Boy, Rogers really stepped through the tackles there nicely at the left side. And the strong safety Smart from Bainbridge is the guy to make contact at the 20. 
Good north-south running by Phillip Rogers that time. The stretch play, he saw the hole inside and lowered his shoulder and got the first down for Tech. Burns and Rogers behind Hamilton. Sheridan right, white left from the center of the field on first down. Here's Hamilton, got caught in the option, and then Joe got stacked up. Robish and also uh, Stroud shot the gap, and then Boss Bailey, who is... The younger brother of both Ronald and Champ, the true freshman from Charlton County in Folkston, makes the stop on Hamilton for a, a yard loss to inside the 20, second 11. Boy, they just, uh, Georgia, pinched their ends that time. They came down the line and hit the big fullback Wilder in the backfield and cluttered up the option. Hamilton had nowhere to go, and he got hit from the backside. Back split, three receiver package now for the Yellow Jackets. Hamilton on second and about 11. Joe on a three-step. Out in the flat, incomplete. Burns picked it up, though, but it's ruled incomplete. Almost a lateral. I'm not so sure it wasn't, Wes. Uh, looked like from here. I'm giving those guys the benefit here, yeah, Coach. <laughs> yeah, it's an incomplete pass. I'm not going to change it from up here, but uh, certainly looked like the ball was thrown behind him to uh, Burns and popped up in his belly. But nevertheless, Tex got third and long here. Third down. Third down, 11. Ball at the Tech 19. The Jackets have hit 50% of their third down. Hamilton sends Sheridan and White to the left. Now they flop Matt Bay, bring Dez in at a slot. Give Georgia something to think about. Here's Charlie in motion. Snap to Hamilton. Joe looks. Back across the middle. Caught Sheridan. He has got a first down to the Bulldog 32-yard line. Glenn Ford made the stop. Mike Sheridan got 14 yards and a first down. Shallow crossing route. Mike Sheridan coming from his right to his left, Wes. They had man coverage on Tech that time, but Sheridan came underneath, and he caught a good throw by Joe Hamilton and then eluded two Georgia defenders to turn the corner on him and get the first down. Wilder and Phillip Rogers back in there now in the eye behind Hamilton. First and 10 for Tech, and it's 33. Jackets moving left to right with 4.54 to go. Joe drops back, being pressured, fumbled the football and gets back on it at the 30-yard line. Almost disaster again. Hamilton had it stripped by Marcus Stroud. Arantis Grant was also in the mix there for Georgia. But Hamilton fell back on it just inside the 30, second and 13 now. Oof. We've had a couple high snaps, a couple of bouncing balls, Kim. Oh, my goodness. 4-23 and counting in this second quarter of play. 7-7 game here in Athens. Matt Guba's come in. He'll line up at an H back at the left side. Phillip Rogers, the lone setback. Single receivers left and right. Hamilton brings Guba in motion to the right side. Joe, three steps. Now in trouble. Trying to sneak out of there. We'll just clutch it in and dive forward to the 31. Third and a dozen now as Stroud and Demetric Evans, sophomore from Haynesville, Louisiana, whose cousin Doug Evans is the former Green Bay Packer now playing for the Carolina Panthers, makes a stop. Joe looked like he was trying to just dump the ball over the middle, but uh, Georgia had everything taken away, and the pocket broke down as he scrambled. Lucky to get a yard there, so Tech once again faces third and long. Terrence Smith has come in for Georgia, as has Paul Snellings in that front wall for Jim Donnan. Bulldogs trying to get everybody set. Hamilton from a shotgun. Georgia's trying to run people off the field. Tech doesn't snap the ball. Here's Hamilton sprinting out of the pocket to his right. Sets, dumps, caught Sheridan, and knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line by Corey Robinson with Mike Sheridan. I think he's going to be a little short, West, by about a yard. Ball's up at the 42, and he had to get up to the almost the 43. So what do you do here, Kim? I think you got to punt it. Uh, your defense is playing pretty well. 3.13 to go in the half. You got one of the best kickers in the country. I think I'd kick it here and play defense. So it's fourth and three. Ball at the Tech 42. Rodney Williams on to punt. Ross Mitchell from South Gwinnett will handle the deep snap. Michael Greer stands at the 15. Snap to Rodney. And he lifts a high spiral. Greer will signal for the fair catch and make it. And now the marker comes oh, out on hey. Kofi Smith. Kofi Smith was trying to angle away. The field judge, Richie Williamson, throws the flag. And this could cost Tech 5 for breaking the kick catch. Two yard kick catch halo. Yep. They're going to call it on Kofi Smith, but uh, I'm I don't, not sure. 
I don't know, Wes. Looked like he was trying to get out of there, but uh, official on the side threw it in there, so it'll be five yards. Georgia will uh, get the ball up at the... Ball was fair caught at the 11-yard line. Cleared up to 16. 47-yard punt by Rodney Williams. 3.04 to play. First half, 7-7 game. Each school's got two timeouts. After the penalty, Georgia has it first and 10 at its 16. West, both of these teams have had trouble picking up the pressure today. Georgia's come on here in the last series of two, putting some heat on Hamilton. Tech, likewise, has been putting heat in fairly consistently on Carter all day. Thad Parker to the left, Tony Small, Michael Greer to the right. Single back Gary, they'll give it to him on first down. Alanda steps away from one, but won't get through the next wave of white shirts who swarm him under at the 17, pick up a one. Clay Brooks led the initial charge, and then Roderick Roberts was the first guy, I beg your pardon, and Clay Brooks led the second charge on Alandis Gary. Second down nine will give Gary a yard to the 17. Good defense by Tech. They, Gary was trying it inside, but saw nothing there, tried to take it to the outside, but the pursuit for Tech stopped him for maybe a half-yard gain. Champ Bailey joins Tony Small far side. Wiggins and Greer here to the near side. Long setback, Gary again. Second down, nine yards to go. Tech's got the nickel in. Here's Carter, three-step drop. Fires Champ Bailey, and he'll try and stretch for a first down and reaches the 35-yard line. He'll be a yard shy, or 25-yard line, I beg your pardon. Edwards and Bostic make the stop. It's third and one. A little quick flat pattern pass to uh, Champ Bailey. Lined up in the slot and went out in the flat. Tech uh, converged on him, but Bailey... Did a nice job to stretch it out up to the 25. They'll bring two tight ends. Here comes Larry Brown, and Ronnie Bradley has also come in, the youngster from Morrow, or I beg your pardon, from Albany. Robert Arnott is from Morrow. Ronnie Bradley, of course, transferred in from Georgia Military. Third down, one for the Bulldogs. They're 25. Give it to Gary, trying the left side. Gary is maybe not going to get it. It's going to depend on the spot. I don't think he got it, I don't West. think he did either. He had to get the ball across the 30, uh, 26 yard line. I think they're going to rule him shy of the 26. So Gary came to the near side. Cameron made the first shot at him, and then Edwards finished him off. It's fourth down. Oh, what a disappointing turn of events for Jim Donnan now with 75 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia's probably going to punt the football away, and Tech's going to get a chance here, Kim. And Tech takes one of their remaining two timeouts. Now they've got one timeout left. Clock is stopped at 1.15 here in the first half. Score tied 7-all, and Wynn Kopp, who is not uh, known for his strong leg, but has done a nice job today for Georgia, will drop back to apparently kick for the Bulldogs. Tech barring something unusual, should have pretty good field position with that two-minute offense that Joe Hamilton has run so well and uh, one timeout left to try to get in scoring range. Remember this, Georgia Tech had a field goal attempt, a 38-yarder, that uh, hooked a little bit, Brad Chambers did, hit the crossbar no good. Tech drove down deep against Georgia and looked like they were in scoring range, but uh, Joe Hamilton threw on first down an interception. And then uh, Georgia's hit Tech with a big pass, a third play of the game. Michael Greer hit Larry Brown, the big tight end, for a 68-yard touchdown pass. And then Tech has uh, scored big. Joe Hamilton uh, found Kelly Campbell, the young freshman, who uh, went 55 yards with his touchdown reception. And those are the two scores. So a close football game. And a lot of people, West would have said this would have been a high-scoring affair. But so far, it's been a defensive struggle. Including me. Let's check in with Edgar Tragitz and get some scores. Edgar. All right, Wes, thank you very much. The game we're watching between Virginia and Virginia Tech. That one where the Hokies lead the Cavaliers now 20-7, 6-10 to go in the second quarter. That one more details in that contest during our halftime report. Also, just underway, Michigan State leads Penn State 7-0. Back to Sanford Stadium. Fourth and one for the Bulldogs at the 25, and Wynn Cop punts it away. Let's see what Tech does. Charlie Rogers standing at the jacket, 37. Snap a little high. Cop got it away, away from Charlie, but he'll drive to catch it from the 35. Charlie back up the middle, 40, and spun around at the 48-yard line by Boss Bailey. That's Rodney Boss Bailey, Roland Champ Bailey. And what happened to Ronald? They didn't hang some moniker on him. He finished up here a year ago. 
The punt by Cop is 39 yards. Kim, he is doing a above average job based on the numbers we've seen on Win Cop from uh, earlier this year. He really has, and uh, even though that was a low kick, Georgia did a nice job of covering it. But Charlie Rogers did an also equally nice job of getting Tech uh, up almost to the midfield strike. Tech has about 25, 30 yards to get in scoring position. Hamilton from a shotgun on the near hash. Joe drops straight back. Bulldogs rush four. Joe in trouble now. Sprints out left side. Has room. 45, 40. Inside the 40 to the 36-yard line and a first down. Jeff Harris, Jeff Harris made the stop on Hamilton. The run goes right at 16 yards for Hamilton. 17 yards for Hamilton. First and 10 tack at the Georgia 35. Ball at the Bulldog 35. Shotgun again. Two right, one left. Joe drops back. Pumps it out in the flat. Caught Joe Burns and hit head on by Corey Robinson for no gain. And quickly, Tech calls a timeout with 40 seconds left to go. Corey Robinson makes a nice stop on Joe Burns in the little screen pass out in the flat here at the near side. Second down and 10 as Tech has called its second timeout with 40 seconds to go in a 7-7 ball game. West Tech has no more timeouts. They oh, really? call one right before that punt to stop it and then That's use right. the final one here. So Thank Tech... You. Uh, is naked here, as they say, on the timeout board. No more timeouts left. Georgia has two. Tech has the ball, though, at the Georgia 35 with 40 seconds to go, facing second and 10. Kim, why do you think this game is, uh, has been so low scoring? I, I, like a lot of others, thought it would be a shootout here today. Well, Wes, the only thing I can see is that Tech and Georgia, particularly Tech, has gotten to Carter. They put a pressure on him, and he's not setting his feet real well in the pocket. He doesn't look real comfortable back there throwing the ball. And I think it's disrupted the Georgia passing game and their timing. Also, Alandis Gary has not been able to establish a run. He had one good run for first down, a draw play that gave Georgia their first and 10 at the Tech 34. But uh, other than that, Tech's been able to contain Georgia on offense. On the other side, Georgia has done a nice job against Tech. Uh, although Tech has had a couple of miscues. They had the interception after Tech was driving and getting an apparent scoring uh, opportunity. Brad Chambers missed the field goal, and then uh, they had a couple of drop passes. Mike Sheridan dropped one, which would have been a first down, as did Charlie Rogers. Right. So no timeouts left. Hamilton spreads white, wide left. Charlie Rogers in the slot. Sheridan in the boundary at the right. Joe Burns alone set back. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the Bulldog 35 with one with 40 seconds left to go in this uh, first half. Fumble of the football, and did Georgia get on it, or did they got it? No, Georgia got on it. Boy, the turnovers have killed Georgia Tech in this first half. There, Hamilton just did not get the exchange as he was trying to set something up with 40 seconds to go, and Georgia has gotten the uh, ball back at their 36, but most importantly, they've got three, uh, two timeouts left. They can turn. Uh, in turn, can try to get into scoring position. 36 seconds left. Second turnover of the day for the Yellow Jackets. Arantis Grant from Dunwoody, the All-SEC candidate, two-year starter, picked it up. Small and Greer to the right. Champ Bailey left. See if Carter goes back to the home run ball. Drops deep. Across the middle. Open. Small. What a catch. One-handed. Inside the 40 of Georgia Tech to the 38, where Tillman made the stop. Tony Small caught the darn thing one-handed. 28 yards and a first down. What a great catch by Tony Small that time. He was wide open, got underneath uh, in the middle of Tech's coverage, and Carter rifled a bullet downfield and hit him. Made a great catch. 23 seconds left. Marker goes down. And let's see, what do we get some motion up front on Georgia, maybe? I think Georgia's going to be penalized five, year, five yards here. Wish it could be five years. <laughs> but the uh, clock is stopped with 20 seconds, and I think they're going to pull this one back and mark off five against the Bulldogs. 20 seconds to go, first half, as Kim said. So it'll be first and 15 for Georgia, but that is probably a stat not even worth mentioning, distance to a first down here. Well, maybe it is, but it's first and 15 now at the Tech 43. 20 seconds left. Georgia lost a lot of time on that completion to Small Kim. Yeah, 16 they, they seconds. Wes, what uh, Jim Donnan's doing, he wants time put back on the clock because if it's dead ball foul, then uh, the clock can't uh, run seconds off. So the official, I think, correctly so, is going to run some cl uh, time back on the clock. It should be more than 20 seconds. Now they're checking Ron Cherry with other members of this Atlantic Coast Conference crew. The umpire today, Bill Wampler, 
and the head linesman is and the back judge there Jim Howie is 22 seconds they give Georgia two seconds and I think that's the right call because uh, if it's a dead ball foul then you can't run additional time off the clock and that's what they did so the official on top of it puts two seconds back on the clock now it starts to run Carter from a shotgun 18 17 snap to him Quincy under pressure just heaves it up there for Champ Bailey deep with Bostick incomplete Bostick nearly had a pick Wes, I don't know about you, but I felt like I was jumping up trying to defend that one myself. That ball stayed up for an eternity. It was great coverage by Bostic on the inside, but Champ Bailey went up, and you just didn't know who was going to bring the ball down. Bostic had inside coverage, got his hands on it, but Bailey did a nice job of keeping him from catching the interception. Champ may have used that right hand to guide JB as they went down the near side. Ball's incomplete. Second and 15 for Georgia to Tech 43 with 11 seconds left. First half action. Game tied at 7. Carter loops it out of the backfield. Call to Landis. Gary down the far sideline. 20. Out of bounds. He goes at the 18-yard line with three seconds left. 25 yards. Quincy Carter to Landis Gary out of the backfield. And with three seconds left, Georgia got the first down, but now it'll be on the foot. Of Hap Hines. Doug Davis will snap. Kirby Smart will hold. Kirby Smart to hold. Hap Doug Hines. Davis will handle the placement of a snap. With a 10 36 yard field goal. Ball is at the Tech 17, right at 36 yards for Hines, who is 5 of 8 this year. Snap, spot, kick is up, and it is good at the horn. So the 36 yard field goal by Hap Hines closes down this first half. Here in Athens, where Georgia the deep man for Tech. And Chad Holloman will kick off for Georgia as we start the second half. 10-7. Three points. Right at the end of the half, we squirted a little more toothpaste out of the tube and then kicked a field goal. We just suddenly had a little spurt. But for 30 minutes before that, we had no offense. 10-7 leading on a field goal of all things. The kickoff. Funny bouncing ball off the 11, taken around the by Deswire around the 12 and got it up to about the 30. Tried to come down the right side. He started middle, hesitated, came back right side. Robert Arnold on the kick covering team, one of our reserve backs, was the first man that hit him on the play. Tex ball in our own 31. Everybody in the press box discussing Tech's fine team speed at the half. They really have two or three people that you just can't quite control. That's what it looks like. Hamilton underneath. Burns, the running back. Gives to Burns, who goes in the middle, and the red shirts stop him, but not until they got two and a half. He got a push, and we hit him right on the 31. Leroy and Seymour, but he got it out to where they're going to put it down, and they put it down way up on the 34, and they give him three. And it'll be second down and seven. He got a very good spot. Tech in white and gold and up to the line. Dogs in red, silver. Tech shotgun with Hamilton on the 34. Hamilton dropping back the pass. He's going to run, and he's open to the 35. We hit him, and he's down in the 40 or 41. Grant hit him from behind. Got his legs, and from the 36, he fell up to the 40. It's going to be about a yard shy but barely a yard shy. Dogs run another big defensive lineman in there. Marcus Stroud take a defensive back man out. Tech is third down and two feet for a first down. They're in a straight old eye with three men lined up behind the quarterback. They give it to the tailback, and we hit him and we push. Now let's see what spot will they get. They went for the two feet. Phillip Rogers in the right side of the Georgia line met it, chest to chest, standing up. But the spot might give him a first down. Well, if he got it, he got it on a second effort because initially he didn't have it. But it looks like he did. Check up to the line. They're first down in their own 41, and they are moving that thing. Hamilton with Phillip Rogers are running back. Play action fake. He's back to pass. Long bound down the middle. He overthrew it. Man intercepts down around our 16. 
He's stopping, trying to go one way and the other. Got a block to the 20, to the 25. Got it up to the 30. Lucky came back, the linebacker, and helped him with a block. Kelly Campbell had the ball way overthrown, and Larry Mann with a critical interception. Dogs get the ball back and had a pretty good return. Time out here, these words on the Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. Tech's third turnover of the day ends this drive. Joe Hamilton with his second interception, one for Larry Mann now, one for Jeff Harris for Georgia as they have it on their own 30-yard line. First and 10 and down to the sidelines and Lauren Smith. Lauren? A lot of excitement on the sideline, Scott, after that interception. And uh, the players, if they're not playing, if they're substitute, are really into the game. And that's what Coach Donnan talked to them about at the half. Get in the game. If you're not playing, get up to the sideline and cheer your buddy on. Georgia's ball in her own 30 after Larry Mann's interception of a pass deeply overthrown. So we're in an eye with two wideouts, and we run a toss sweep to Gary with blocking out to the right. He's got blocking for 5, for 10 or 11, and out of bounds. Should be a first down around a 41. Dogs pulled a line out there and just swept it out to the right with a good toss sweep. Boy, that really looked good. That seal blocking on the far side of the field by George's line was really effective. Gary got a, a quick 12-yard gain out of that. And, and Jim Donnan, that's what he's liked about his tackles all year long, Chris Terry and Matt Stinchcomb, the fact that they can get on the outside eye of these guys and cut off the defensive ends uh, at the blink of an eye. Ball on the 41. The gain was 11 plus a few inches. They're blitzing. Toss sweep to the other side. Gary, 40, 45, 47, 50, 45. Staggering, 45, 35, 30, and down. Olandis, Gary just running like crazy. In the last seven, eight yards, he had been hit. Stimson, the end, got him. Tillman, the safety, got him. We swept it right, and we swept it left and got Olandis Gary out there both times. First down in the Georgia Tech 30, and we're leading 10-7. Carter comes out to the huddle after being on the sidelines for a moment. Georgia breaks the huddle, and Greer and Larry Brown go out to the right. Tony Small to the left. We are in an eye, and we get to the fullback, and Bradley going at right tackle, and Tech knocks him down after two, two and a half yards at the very most. Robertson, the linebacker, hitting him. A little quick hitter at right tackle by Bradley, the fullback. And we got two, I know, but I don't know if we got two and a half. Got Wiggins back in and Champ Bailey in and take Bradley and Orlando's out. We only got two to the 28, second down and eight. Dogs knocking on the door and they're leading 10 to 7. Three wideouts left and one right. Tech's up on a five. Now they're up in almost a six-man line. Snap to Quincy Carter. He fires against pressure. Caught by Wiggins on the 26 low and then hit around the 15 or 14 out of bounds by Bostic, who got his feet clipped out. Carter had a rush on him, dumped it hard out, low to the left, and Wiggins reached down with big hands and caught it and got it to the 13, and it'll be first down there. And Gary and Bradley go back in. We're on the 13-yard line, barely the front nose of the football, and we're leading 10-7. to 7. Dogs with an eye. We break two men right and one to the left. With the eye, we go to the tailback. Oh, and this Gary over the 10 to maybe the 7-and-a-half where they tug him backwards, and now they still pull him back to the 9. Olandis Gary just shot in there. Somebody in that line opening a hole, and Gary just shot up in there. Where are they going to mark it? It wound up. They put it on the eight-yard line. Chris Edwards, the linebacker, was the main man in the stop, but there was four or five white jerseys. The gain was exactly five and a half. We are second down and four and a half, and we are on the Tech 8, really knocking at this thing now. Three wide outs. Tech up on a six-man line. Toss sweep to Gary. Somebody blitz. He staggered off, and he fought his way all the way to the five and got a couple of yards out of nothing. He got hit behind the line and pushed it right tackle to the five. Robinson, a nose tackle. Tarplin, the end, got him. Molandis, Gary, what second and third effort? Got it to the five and should not have had a thing. You are now third down on the other guy's five-yard line, 
and you need a yard and a half for a first down. 10 to 7 we're leading. The football, however, is an inch or so shy of the five yard line. Break two men out. Slot right, one man left, one running back, Gary. Tech in a 4-4. And Quincy didn't like what he saw and called time. He backed the fullback up. Bradley had come up close to the line. And the dogs take a time here with 9.48 to go in this third quarter. We are 10-7 in leading, and we have punched this thing all the way down to the five. Timeout. These words on the Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. 9.48 to go in the third quarter. Dogs huddling just outside the 10. And the ball is just outside the other guy's five. Third down a yard and a half. You need a yard and a half to continue it or you need five and a few inches for something bigger than that. Dogs struck a long trick play early. Tech hit a long one in the middle of the second quarter. We had a field goal right at the end of the half. Tech had missed one earlier that hit the left bar and fell down. Tech has dropped three open passes. Now, third down. Not quite two. Dogs down there on that Tech five. Right in front of the Tech stands, by the way. And those stands are up and hollering. Our tight end slides over to the strong side of the field. We snap at the Quincy Carter. He needs a block. He can't get it. Now he turns it, and they knock him out on the six, and he didn't get a thing. Try to come wide to the left. Couldn't get a block. They broke it down. He stiff-armed one man, and they forced him out. He took a two-yard loss, and it's fourth down on the seven. Journal Constitution has Georgia Southern and Colgate tied 21-21 in the second. They have North Carolina leading NC State 10-3 in the second. Carter tried to run out wide to the left. We couldn't get him there. Tech just broke it down, and here we are to try another field goal. 941 half Hines will try a field goal from the 15 or the 14 and a half. And they set it down, and the kick is up, and the kick is good, and he hit another one. And well, three is better than nothing. Georgia leads 13 to 7. Timeout here, these words on the Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. Georgia settles for three, a 24-yard half Hines field goal, 13-7. Georgia leads Georgia Tech. Let's go down to the sidelines and Lauren Smith. Lauren? Just before that play, Marcus Stroud was running down the sideline shouting, go for it, go for it. That's one thing that players have in common with fans. They always want to go for it. Chad Holloman will kick off for Georgia again. 9.36 to go in the third quarter. The lead is six little points, 13 to seven. Dogs will kick off. Tech is Gregory and White deep men, though they're only standing on the five. Holloman hits it very high, I mean really high, on the one-yard line, Gregory to the 10, over to the left side to the 20, and going to get hit around the sideline of the 25 or 27 or so. And we will be first down Georgia Tech on the 27. I know I'm repeating myself, but they have so much speed, you keep waiting for a big play. Brett Milliken on the kick covering team, a running back by trade, was a guy, the first guy that hit him. Here's Tech up on the 27 first down. Georgia Tech is now six down with 9.25. We started this quarter really running on them, and then we bogged down on the five yard line. Tech with an eye, two wide outs. Hamilton underneath. We're almost in a five-man line. Fullback in motion. He's running the option. He pitched it to the corner. He jumped the body on the ground, and then we hit him up on a 33, at least five or six. Charlie Rogers coming out. Jeff Harris had to finally get him. They ran a big sweep. Just That's the kind of stuff we started the quarter with, and we were really making it go. And the official puts it down on the 33. Gain was five and a half. It's going to be second down, four and a half. Tech up to the line on their own 33. They got to get it to the 37 and a half for a first down. They're in a wishbone. Hamilton underneath. Our line is shifting. 
And Tech, as they pitch it out to the corner, gets stopped on the 31 by Champ Bailey, who hit Joe Burns, the running back, behind the line. Champ Bailey just sprinted up from the corner and knocked him down back in the 31 and a loss of a couple of yards plus a couple of inches. Third down and about six and a half for Tech back in the 31. Third down. Tex Bostic and George's Bailey are really playing defensive ball games at the corners. Tech two wideouts left, one right. They're back in that shotgun on third down. Snap. Hamilton pitches it out to the corner. And he slipped as he tried to cut around a tackler and went down. Charlie Rogers out to the left, fell up on the 34 all by himself. Kirby Smart and Glenn Ford were coming up. He wanted a cut. He fell down on the 33. And it should be fourth down and four. And Rodney Williams, that outstanding punter, is in. Michael Greer in a long safety. Here's this great kicker. And we broke a man in, didn't get to him, and the kick is end over end. Went off his foot, not good. That pressure up the middle, I don't know. Somebody came on up the middle. Boss Bailey came up the middle, and he kicked it off the left side. Only 31 yards. It was an end over end thing. Boss Bailey got kind of close. And the dogs have the ball on their own 35-yard line. And time is called again here. 13-7 to 7, Georgia. Quick timeout. Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. Bulldogs lead it 13 to 7 with 7.54 to go in quarter number three. The dogs starting on their own 35. Georgia up to the line, two wide outs, a tight end, two tight ends standing and moving and flopping to the other side to unbalance the line. And Tech comes up with people there. Then we put a man in motion the other way and we give it to the tailback and there's no room. And Gary trying to go inside a right tackle. Got shoved back after two yards at the most out around the 37. Stimps in the end, tarpaulin, two ends primarily the key men on the stop we may have gained a yard and a half we'll see journal constitution scoreboard north carolina 17 nc state 3 penn state 21 michigan state 14 in the second both of those are second quarter scores ball is outside of the 37 of the 37 and a half we gained two and a half but they broke the blocking down at right tackle that time greer out to the left that is parker goes right but the officials have called time. One of the officials has called time on himself. Let's see what he's doing here. And he wants to talk to another official. Now he's coming over. He's facing the press box. Let's see what we're doing. Uh, I think his mic or something. We've got a whistle in the stands, please. Refrain from blowing the whistle in the stands, please. A whistle is being blown, please. Somebody is blowing a whistle in the stands somewhere. That's it's unusual, yeah. isn't it? Have an official make a plea on the public address system. He says, don't blow the whistle, so what does everybody do? Yeah. Or they whistle. And he said, please, about three times. <laughs> he, he said, please. Yes, he did. No Very threat. polite. He said, please, three times. Second down, seven and a half. Greer off to the left. That is Parker and Tony Small to the right. Carter underneath with one back. We put Tony Small in motion. We're on our 37 and a half. Comes swinging out to the left. Quincy does. Fires. It is complete on the 47 and out of bounds to Tony Small. First down. Tony Small caught it. Went out of bounds. Caldwell, the strong safety, hit him. So Quincy hit a guy, and we're up there just shy of the 50 or so. Where are they going to mark it? They bring it into the 47 and a half. First down. Clock is 6.56 to go in the third quarter. Dogs lead 13 to 7. On two field goals. Can you believe that, of all things? The first time this season that Hap Hines has had a two field goal game. Deck makes two defensive changes. We have three tight ends in now. We have one back. They're going to blitz everybody. Carter's in trouble behind the line. And he is pulled down on the 45. A two-yard loss by Chris Edwards, a linebacker. We tried to get Quincy coming out left. And he got... In trouble coming to the sideline, stopped and tried to go back and lost two and a half yards or more. Let's see. Put it back to the 45. And a loss on the play, two and a half. Second down, 12 and a half. Well, Tech's really done a fine job of keeping uh, Quincy Carter contained today. Carter, six carries, minus five yards. He's yet to be a factor out of the backfield. Small and Parker go off to the right. It's the only two receivers. It's a two, three yarder. 
third and 12 now back on our own 45. Not moving right now. We're leading 13 to 7. The atmosphere is getting a little thick when you watch your offense just sputtering. We started the quarter really driving a Tex up in a tight five now. Shotgun snap to Carter. Back to throw right down the middle of Tony Small who hangs on the ball barely on his hip and then gets knocked back from the 41 to the 43. He caught the ball. He juggled and juggled it off his hip and he fell backwards with the ball and they put it back where he was first fighting it and give us a first down in the 41. 13 yards, 13 and a half yards. Bostick and Caldwell had him. He was fighting it off his hip. Did not have control at all, but managed to hang on before he hit the ground. How did he catch that? That's two oh, really yeah. spectacular catches at about the same spot on the field. Burst down on the Georgia Tech 41 for the Dogs. We split two men out. Tech's in a 4-3. Toss sweep to Bradley. In trouble going to the corner. He's going to get there, but he runs into a blocker and a tackler on the 40 and gets knocked down. Got a yard, maybe. Claybrook's a fine defensive end, a sophomore. Of all the men that Tech gets back next year, he's one of them. They yeah. get almost everybody, but yeah. he's one of them. No he, game. He's definitely NFL potential. He's had a big day today. He's blocked a couple of passes off the line of scrimmage. He's had numerous pressures, and he's, he's having a pretty good day over there with Chris Terry. Second down, 10. Ball on the 41. We put three receivers to the left. Tech brings everybody up on the line to face right with them. Quincy's in a shotgun, and now he's dropping back with it. Dumps it across the line to Brown, completing the 35. Big Larry to the 30, the 25, the 20. Knocked down to the sidelines around the 14 or so. Big Larry Brown, the tight end, running right to left. Michael Greer had a good block in front of him to help him. Wilkins a free safety, and Clark, the cornerback, got him. We are first down on the Tech 14. Now, we were down here a few minutes ago, and they stopped us on the five, and we had to kick a field goal. Big Larry Brown with a receiver blocking in front of him as we look at that replay. We are on the Tech 14, and we're leading 13 to 7. Greer comes out. Gary and Bradley are the running backs. Dogs coming up to the line, and the official steps in now to check something. What do we got? They're changing the ball, I think. No, it wasn't that exactly. He just picked it up and put it back down. First down on the Tech 14. Dogs down here for the second time in this quarter. We're in an eye now with two tight ends, only one receiver. Do a little toss sweep. Phil Anders Carey got a block, got him down. No room to run on the nine. He's fighting his way down to the corner. Touchdown! Oh, baby! Jermaine Wiggins, a great block. He wasn't two inches in bounds. Wait a minute now. Another official's calling it back. Wait a minute. He said he stepped on the line inside of the nine-yard line or so. They take the touchdown back. He tight roped, barely inside. Gary, who shouldn't have had much at all. And they bring it back to the eight-yard line. So it will be second down and about four. Ball is right on the eight exactly. They started on the 14 and a half. Second down. Four and a half to go. Tech up on the line, and we run to Landis Gary. He bumped into a blocker. He's fighting over the four, maybe to the three, with a push up in the middle of the line by Herndon and Jennings and Stargell. And Robertson, the linebacker, was the guy that got him. Tech at a lineman up slow. It'll be first down. They got it over the four. It'll be first down and goal to go. They got it to the three and a half. And Gary had to just keep his legs driving on that. 13 to 7, we're leading. Clock is 4, 18, and less than that in the third quarter. Tech runs two men out. One of their defensive linemen came out a little slow. We're in an eye. One receiver left. Tech's got seven men on the line. We go to Gary, and they hit him. We can't get anything there, and then they'll drive him down. He may have penetrated, and I'm guessing, to the two and a half at the very most, and then got knocked back, but I don't think he got that far. Tarplin, the end, and Tillman, the free safety, got him. We couldn't push at our right tackle or right end. 
they had too much manpower and they put it down on about the three. Not really, just barely. They're on a three and a half, second down. Second down, three and a half for a touchdown. We're leading 13 to seven. Down there close and close, but you've got to get it in. Texan an 8-3 defense. And he bootlegs out to the right, and he's looking for somebody. There he is. Off his hands. He threw it too high. A wide open Wiggins. Watch a flag down. We got a man down. We got Gary hurt back behind the line. Wide open tight end leaping and off his hands. Catch the call down inside. The officials are talking about a call inside somewhere around the line of scrimmage. It's in the end zone, then let's catch the call. Holding on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Holding on the defense. That's an automatic first down, yeah. too, so that's a few more plays. So the penalty is about a yard or a yard and a half down to the one and a half, down to the two. Call it the two. About a one-yard penalty, maybe. So we miss a touchdown pass thrown a shade high though it hit his hands, and now we're on the two. There was defensive holding in the play. We got an automatic first down. Everybody in close. Texan a 7-4. We go to Gary. He jumped. Touchdown! Boy, he earned that one. 19-7. Mm. to seven. One of many seniors in their final home game today. And what are we going to do without Orlandis Gary next year? <laughs> well, we'll try an extra point. We might go for two. 19 to 7 with 3.13 to go. We're going to try to go for two. One back is Gary. We have four wideouts. And Tech wants to call time to discuss this thing. Tech calls time here. Still more than three minutes to go in the third quarter. It's 19 to 7. Hondo thinks they may have been shy a player and that that's why they call time. But Tech suddenly called. Ball is set on the three yard line, on the extra point line. We had the receivers went the wrong way for a while. Now we get them right. Two left and two right. Shotgun with a running back. Snap to Quincy Carter. He's going to follow a blocker and fight his way and try to get it in there. Did he get in? Where are they going to spot that? Are they going to say they stopped him on the goal line? He went at right guard. He tried to follow a blocker. They say no good. He didn't get it. Tech stopped the attempt for two. Quincy tried to run it in. And so the try for two is no good. Now all you can wonder is, is that going to haunt you later on? You don't know. It's 19 to 7. I'm trying to watch a replay right now. He got one block at his right shoulder. He got hit as he neared the goal line, but they say he didn't get it in. The replay shows he got it in. Timeout. Pause for these words on the Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. 65-yard, 12-play drive for Georgia. Landis Gary dives for a two-yard touchdown. The two-point conversion, no good. Georgia leads it 19-7. to And down to the sidelines, and Lauren Smith. Lauren? He's cooled off a little bit now, but Coach uh, Dunham was really hot about the call, and he let the officials on this side of the field know how he felt about it. Chad Alleman will kick off. They have Gregory and White deep. 19 to 7. Believe me, that doesn't mean anything. Holloman will kick off. 12 point lead and all day left to play. Though there is a long shadow kind of moving off the top of the stadium. Holloman kicks it very high, extremely high, not deep. Seven yard line, Gregory. 15 20. Going to the far side. Got one block in front of him. He got to the 27. He got there quick. You know, they got a lot of guys that can really run. Journal of Constitution says Penn State is 35 to 14 on Michigan State in the second. Well, Weatherspoon, a backer, and Kirby Smart, a safety on the tackle ball, is brought back to the 26. And Georgia Tech will come up to the line. First down on their own 26. 3.03 to go. It's 19 to 7. Tech up to the line. Dogs are playing almost a five man front. Joe Hamilton underneath, going to give it to the tailback. Big hole at the tackle out to the 30, out to the, about the 35. Corey Robinson had to get Joe Burns. Boy, they blocked the tackle on that side. 
And the ball will be out on the 35, second down and one. Georgia Tech second down and a yard. They got nine yards in the first play. They split two men out there in an eye. Hamilton underneath. Going to give to the tail, and we hit him on the line, but he fought his way and got a yard and got a first down. We hit him a little behind the line, and Grant had to finally get him. Holland should hit him about a foot or so behind the line. Joe Burns got it in, got it up to the 36 and a half or so, wherever they put it, 37 maybe, and a first down. Got a 12-point lead, but there's so much time. The Journal-Constitution has Virginia Tech 29 to 14 on Virginia in the third quarter. Tech up on the 37, first down. Their backs move in motion. He hands to the tail, who cuts back in a hole against the grain up to the 45, maybe the 49. They had a big hole in there. There's a little shoving after the play, and it'll be a first down. Joe Burns, boy, you talk about Blockus. The grain suddenly came back this way, and the hole was open this way. They started left and came right back across. First down on the 49. Tech driving on the ground here late in the third quarter. They're 12 down. They're in an eye with two wideouts. We come up into a 5-3, virtually so. Full back in motion. They give it to the tail. We hit him right on the line, maybe a yard or two behind the line. Antonio Cochran and then Grant hit Philip Rogers behind the line. Well, that was some great pursuit by Grant, who came from the offside linebacking position, went right down the line of scrimmage and made the stock on Burns as he got to the line of scrimmage. Just a terrific pursuit by Orantes Grant. The loss puts Tech back on their own 47, second and 12. When are they suddenly going to try to strike one deep? They've hit one today. A minute and 19, now less than that in the third quarter. 19 to 7, the snap shotgun to Hamilton, who dumps it across low and complete on our 46. They go to our 40 first down. Matt Way, the tight end. Matt Vey, the tight end. Got about 13 yards. Dustin Lucky, the linebacker, had to hit him, and Hamilton's bringing them down the field late in the third quarter. And we will be first down in the Georgia 40. Tech coming down in a drive. Dogs have had two drives in this quarter. Tech's got one going now late in the quarter. Less than a minute. Tech puts two men left and one right. They are in a shotgun. First down, they've come down to Georgia's 40. Hamilton hollering. Back there behind the line about four yards. And they snap it on the run, and Hamilton's at right tackle and goes to our 36 and a half. He had blocking in a hole. Holland should shut the play down primarily. Leroy was hanging on to him from the side before the linebacker hit him. It'll be second down. When we went for two and missed it, it'll be interesting to see the film on that thing once you get a look at it. And it might really turn out to be big. You don't know. Ball in the 36, they got four. They snapped it moving last time like a single wing. Second down. He runs to the left, gives to the tail, and the red shirts hit him on the line. Maybe a yard behind the line. Joe Burns hit by Josh Millard. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter, though they are on our 37th. End of the quarter. Pause for these words. On the Final 15 minutes now in Athens. Georgia leading Georgia Tech by a score of 19-7. to With Kim King, West Durham at Sanford Stadium for the 93rd meeting between the two schools. Tech has the series. Georgia 52 wins, 35 losses, and five ties. The Bulldogs uh, only claim this to be the 91st meeting with 52 wins, uh, 33 losses, and five ties. Georgia does not count a 1943 48-0 Tech win or a 1944 44-0 win. Uh, as I understand, Bulldog history shows that at that time, Tech was a naval training facility, Kim, for World War II, and therefore players from other schools might have been playing for Georgia Tech. But Tennessee did the same thing with Vanderbilt, as I recall. Tennessee just says they didn't play football then, but... Georgia insists that there were guys from Alabama and Florida and other schools on the team at that time, but heck, you can't have good rivalries if you don't have controversy. <laughs> Al Serraldo Jr. says if they line up, it counts. Brother, you're exactly right. Wes, this drive for Tech started from their 26. They got uh, most of the yardage uh, on the running game. 
but Russell Matvey got a 13-yard reception return or a pass completion from Joe Hamilton to the Georgia 40. But on first down, uh, Hamilton, after picking up four to the 36, Burns lost one uh, on second down back to the 37. So Tech now faces third and seven, ball on the 37-yard line. We're about to kick or set in play the uh, fourth quarter. Georgia leads Georgia Tech 19-7. to You almost get the feeling, Wes, that Tech's in two-down territory here. And if they don't make the first down, you almost get the feeling they probably need to try to go. They have not stopped Georgia here offensively the last two times Georgia's had the ball. They've gotten points on the board. Jack hits 5 of 10 in third downs third today. Down, seven. Tech trailing by a dozen. 19 to 7. Last three games decided by a total of 13 points. Hamilton has Charlie Rogers and Joe Burns behind him. Now they flop out. Rogers joins Sheridan here at the left. Hamilton, straight back, pumps it across the middle. Charlie's got it, and it's going to be close to a first down. Tackle made by Glenn Ford from behind. It's going to be about a half step short of the first down. You got to go for it here. See where the official's going to just shy of the 30. You got to get it to the 30. Now Philip Rogers comes back. I like with the, Virgil Johnson. I like the quarterback sneak here, Wes. You, know, you got to get about maybe not even the length of the football it looks like to get the first down. You got a guy who went, who's a candidate for the Allen Trophy snapping it. Hamilton's coming on an option. He's going to pitch it. Phillip Rogers has got the first down and more. Knocked out of bounds at the Bulldog 22 and a half yard line. I'm glad Ralph Friedgen's calling him and not me. <laughs> the naked option down the line. Georgia in that goal line or short yardage defense just tried to take all the gaps away. And once uh, Hamilton pitched it, he got outside a contain. The cornerback had to come over and make the hit. But uh, the safety, I should say, got another first down for Tech. Eight yards to the Bulldog, 23. Fresh set of downs. Early fourth quarter in Athens. Wilder and Phillip Rogers in there now for Coach O'Leary. White will come here to the boundary at the left. Sheridan wide to the right. High behind Hamilton. First down, give it to Phillip Rogers. And he'll move the stack to the 20. Pick up a right at three on the play. Pack of red shirts there to greet him. And I think they were headed by Adrian Hollingshed. Sophomore from Fort Valley. They mark it to the 22nd and 7. Tech's got to get a touchdown here, Kim. They have to get points on the board uh, to get back in this thing. They're, Georgia's just sort of pulling away from them. This is very crucial possession. Sheridan left, white right, Burns alone set back. Dez toward the formation in motion. Play action to Burns. Hamilton boots back across the middle. Gooba, 15, Gooba, 10-yard line, first down. Pass is complete to Gooba. It goes 10 yards. Jeff Harris makes the stop. Well, there's a guy, Matt Gooba came to Tech as a linebacker. Had some injuries early, never really played. Moved into tight end and uh, fifth year senior. Just does uh, basic yeoman type work, but that time he was open on the boot underneath and got a crucial first down for Tech. Kim, goal to goal now. Yep. Ball right at the 10. Yep. High formation, Wilder and Burns behind Hamilton. Single receivers left and right on the far hash. Joe on first down. First play, Burns straight up the middle. Burns. Touchdown, Georgia Tech! Whoa! I want to tell you what. The rookie knows they've been playing this thing 105 years, but he acts like he's been here for 100 of them. 11 play, 74-yard drive, and for Georgia Tech, boy, it came at a most opportune time. Georgia had scored twice in the third quarter to widen the lead to 19-7, to but Tech has come back now and answered Georgia's score. They got it up uh, at 19-13. They'll go for two. So two minutes gone now in this fourth quarter of play. Burns has got his fifth rushing score of the year, a 10-yard blast right up the middle, and the Jackets are going to go for two on a 12-play, 74-yard drive. Hamilton moves everybody around off the near hash. Bring Sheridan back to him. Joe to the left. Now we'll scramble to the right. He's going to keep it. Hamilton, two-point conversion. Hamilton, Justin two Lucky had a shot at him, but the Bulldogs couldn't get lightning in a bottle. 
Timeout on the field. 13 minutes to go. And this is what 80,000 showed up for. Tech trailing Georgia 19-15. You're listening to Yellow Jacket football. Bulldogs 19, Yellow Jackets 15. 13 minutes to play at Sanford Stadium in Athens. Kim, there have been some big drives this year, but 12 plays, 74 yards, and 5.03. I'll stand that one up with the biggest of the fall. And the big play, Wes, fourth down and less than a yard to go, just really the length of a football up at the Georgia 31-yard line, and Tech with their short yardage set. Looked like they were going to try to wedge it out, but no. Hamilton came down the line on the naked option play, pitched it to Phillip Rogers, who turned the corner, picked up eight to the uh, 23, and then Rogers got uh, three to the 20. Bailey then Guba on a on a bootleg pass underneath, got 10 to the 10, and then Joe Burns, a young freshman, just shot up off right tackle, went in for the touchdown. So Tech has answered Georgia now. They're right back in this thing, 19-15. 13 minutes left to go in this contest. Georgia has two timeouts, as does Georgia Tech. Rodney Williams, who kicked it out of bounds on his last kickoff, as it lined up. Patrick pass, Champ Bailey deep to receive for the Dogs. Tech moves from right to left here in this fourth quarter of play. Williams along the ground, and Bailey from the nine off a hop. Champ looking, oh my goodness, Sean Gregory. Dropped a pile of bricks on Bailey at the 21. Bailey got a Bell flag Watley there, was also down there, and let's see what that's about. Got a flag on Rodney Williams, came in late. Play is stopped up there at 21. Rodney Williams is going to be hit with a 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Flags up at the Georgia 30-yard line. Was it Wiggins who he's uh, colliding with there, the I, big tight end? I think he was jawing at Quincy Carter as Carter was coming on the field. Let's see, two of them. Uh -huh. So offsetting, but uh, Rodney Williams and Quincy Carter went a little jawing contest on the sideline, clearly after the ball uh, play had been stopped, but the offsetting penalties, nice call, Mr. Referee. Well, those two guys that played for Buck Godfrey at Southwest DeKalb go to way back, other. Kim. And Rodney probably stirred it up a little bit when he said, I like Quincy Carter, but this week I hate Quincy Carter. <laughs> Carter's got 206 yards, 13 to 24 passing. Three to the left, one to the right. First down, Georgia looking to pass. Carter on a straight drop. Out there for Bailey, and it is on. Oh, beg your pardon, he tried to go to Brown, and Tillman was covering. And boy, Tito Claybrooks is complaining. He claims he was held all the way. And uh, Georgia, lucky they got away with one there. They had a hand up on the jersey in front of the referee, but they didn't call it. Second down, 10 yards to go on the incompletion. Bailey looked to be the primary receiver, and then Carter, you could make a claim he may have underthrew it a little bit, and Brown was the closest guy. Nonetheless, incomplete. Second down, 10 to go. 12.43 to play in Athens, and the game is four points. Georgia 19 and Tech 15. Bailey here to the right. Small and Greer to the left. Second down. Carter underneath there. Small and oh, did Tech play that well? Nate Stimson hit Tony Small at the 20-yard line. A loss of one on the play. It's third and 11, Kim. Trying to set up the little tunnel screen, Wes. Sucking Tech in with their defensive rush and throwing it to Small. Flank to the left. Working down underneath in the tunnel. Trying to get behind the blockers. But Nate Stimson was out there to read it and to wrap Small up for a yard loss. Key play for Georgia right here, third and 11. Third and 11 for the Bulldogs. Georgia, three of nine in third downs today. Larry Brown, Tony Small to the left side. Wiggins, Bailey, and Greer all here to the right. Carter all alone, snap to him. Quincy dropping back, cross the middle. Bailey's got it, but does not have the first down as Delonte Cameron drags him down at the Bulldog 30-yard line. Pick up of 10. It is fourth and one. Cameron eight stops today. As Carter hit Champ Bailey. Georgia's three of 10, and they're going to punt it away. Good defense by Tech that time. And uh, Cameron picking up Bailey, who was crossing across the middle. And his linebacker, he's got his responsibility to take that crossing route away. And after Bailey caught it, stopped him by the yard shy of the first down. Win cop. Standing back on his 15, he's going to kick it away. Charlie Rogers waits. The punt by Cop. High, wobbly kick. Charlie moves upfield, makes the play. 
Steps across the 40, stretches to nearly the 43-yard line. Charlie Rogers, Charlie Rogers got seven yards out of absolutely zero down there, Kim. Timeout on the field, 11.01 to go in Athens. Georgia Tech will have the ball, trailing the Bulldogs by four after this network break on the Georgia Tech Football Network. Playing for a little more than the Wolfpack are today, Kim. Well, they are. They're trying to get in the bowl picture as an outside shot, and with a win today, they'd be eligible. That'd be a big turnaround for Torbush in North right. Carolina. And it would be make Carl Torbush the first coach since Tom Young in the 40s to have a winning season in his first year. Yeah. So, big game. Here's Georgia Tech, first and 10 at its 42 yard line. Trailing by four with 11.01 to play. Hamilton with Wilder and Burns behind him off the far hash mark. Wilder in motion. Here's a little counter. Give it to Burns. Joe slides up in there for a couple, maybe to the 44, before Hollingshed and Leroy make the stop. Hollingshed, Leroy, and Conklin wrap them up. Joe Burns maybe with a couple. Let's call it second mate. Tech back to the power game, if you will, with Burns. Tried a little counterplay that time, but uh, Georgia's interior defensive set stopped it. Straight eye, quick Second snap, eight. toss to Burns. Coming back here to the near side, got nothing. Snellings snuffs it out. Beggy Park Seymour back. snuffs it out with Hollingshed again. No gain. Maybe lost a yard. Back to the 43. Let's call it third and nine. And there's an injured player, and it's Burns. So Burns is down at the 40-yard line. And Tech will be forced to go third and long here. The clock is stopped with 10-19 to Big play here, West, for both teams. Tech facing third, now nine. Need a conversion here. Georgia's doing everything they can to stop. Three to the right. Lone back, Phillip Rogers. Hamilton from a shotgun. Here's White in motion, being followed by Ford. Joe took Des White, and he'll reach the 48-and-a-half-yard line. Ford makes a stop. It'll be fourth and four now. Got to punt it here, Wes. So Hamilton to Des White. Stop. Tech now five of 12 in third downs. Rodney Williams will kick it to Michael Greer. Greer stands at the 10. Waits on the snap. There it is. Rodney hangs a beautiful spiral up there. Greer runs out from it. It'll hit at the one and kick into the end zone. The punt goes 52 yards. 9.24 to go now, Kim, and Georgia's going to get it back. First and 10 at its 20. Timeout on the field. The Bulldogs lead the Yellow Jackets. 19-15, fourth quarter of play at Athens, and Lewis Carter changing the play, it looks like, on first and 10 at the 20. Toss to Gary, running to the right side, got one block, got another one, and finally slammed to the turf at the 24-yard line. Delonte Cameron, Nate Simpson across to make the stop with Chester, South Carolina's Jerry Caldwell. Four on the play, second down, six yards to go for Georgia at its 24. Pretty fine play by Cameron. Now Gary comes out of there, and he's a little slow coming off here, Kim, as Big Wiggins comes in there, the tight end. Parker and Small to the left. Two tight ends for the Bulldogs, and Ronnie Bradley, the lone running back on second down six. Carter will give it to Ronnie Bradley, trying the near side, and got a yard and no more. Stimson again. And also Tillman up in coverage from the uh, free safety spot. So Ronnie Bradley got a yard. It's third and five. Eight minutes, 21 seconds and counting in the ball game. 19-15 with the Bulldogs and Yellow Jackets. Playbrooks asking for the tech partisan folks here to get up on their feet. Georgia, 3 of 10 in third downs today. Thad Parker left, Tony Small right. Play action, Carter with Playbrooks on him, throwing deep. Small is there, Bostic there, incomplete. And I want to tell you, Carter got hammered by Claybrooks. And he's hurt, Wes. Quincy wants a timeout. He's going to Ron Cherry for something, but Claybrooks leveled him. And he's really upset. Three of 11 in third downs is Georgia, and the Bulldogs have to punt it away. 
Bostick's broken up his third pass of the day. Kim, you knew with the success Small had had that they would try to go to him, and J.B. made a sensational play. Cop to stand at the 10, snap to him. Wobbly kick headed toward Charlie. He calls everybody off. It'll take a big bulldog bounce inside the 35 and roll dead at the 32-yard line. Down at the 32. Carter's really upset here on the near sideline where he's being attended to. Should have thought about that when he signed the National Letter of Intent. Now's a great time to order a Papa John's pizza, piping hot with fresh ingredients. Papa John's, a right call during any game. 7.37 to go, four-point game. Hamilton on a straight drop. Joe across the middle, Wilder's got it. Up near a first down, breaks the 40 to the 41-yard line. Nine yards on first down. Second down and one to go. Lucky and Hollingshed make the stop for Georgia. Kim, I'm Quincy Carter. I know I'm going to get hit today, huh? Yep. Wilder and Charlie Rogers on second and one. Four-man front. Lucky tried to crawl a gap. Now backs off. Here comes Tech on the option. Pitches to Charlie. Great block, Wilder. 45. Charlie outside into Georgia territory. Knocked out of bounds at the Bulldog 47-yard line. It goes for a dozen on second and short. Larry Mann, the junior from Dunwoody High School, makes the stop on Charlie Rogers. Kim, good play there. Good call on uh, second and short. Georgia and tight defense trying to take every way, thing away inside and Tech comes outside with the option. Ed Wilder, nice block. Charlie Rogers, another first down Tech. Sheridan left, Des White right. Georgia showing man coverage here. Hamilton with an eye behind him on the far hash. 6.57 to play in the ball game. First down. Give it to Phillip Rogers. Shedding tacklers. 40, 35, 32 yard line goes Rogers. 15 yards before Kirby Smart makes the stop. Wes, that was a check call by Joe Hamilton. He saw Georgia was in a defense that gave an inside lane for Wilder to pick up the linebacker, and that's what he did. He chipped off the linebacker, and Phillip Rogers had clear sailing all the way down to the Georgia 32. 15 yard pickup for another tech first down. Wilder, Phillip Rogers stay in the eye. White left, Sheridan right. Ball in the center of the field. Tech trailing four. Snap to Hamilton. Give it to Rogers. Cuts it back. He'll get a yard to the 31. Well played out there by Leroy and Marcus Stroud. Hollingshed in on another tackle. Rogers got a yard. It's second down, nine to go at the Bulldog 31. Six minutes, 16 seconds and counting. Fourth quarter of play in Athens. Georgia leading Georgia Tech by a 19-15 score. Clock is running to 6.09 now in the fourth quarter. Tech trails 19-15. Both teams with two timeouts left. White and Sheridan to the left. High behind Hamilton. Here's Joe. Pitches to Charlie Rogers, and he will be tracked down from behind. Arantis Grant, Georgia flowed to the play well. Smart and Bailey really kind of blew it up, Kim. Grant was just able to clean things up. It's a loss of a yard, third and ten. Good play by Georgia. They, Tech has gone to the well one time too many, and they tried to set the option up, and you call it, Wes. The defensive secondary recognized it, came flying upfield, and stopped him for a yard loss. So big play for both teams. Pocket 526 in running here. Tech with third and 10 from the Georgia 32-yard line. Still two plays, two down distance, Kim? Yeah, two down distance. White and Kelly Campbell to the right. Sheridan left. Play clock at five. Snap to Hamilton. Joe drops back. Throws to the end zone. Sheridan there. Almost a sensational diving catch. Jeff Harris was in coverage for the Bulldogs. Just ran an up pattern and tried to hit Sheridan. Threw the ball out there. It was a good throw, but Sheridan just couldn't accelerate quite the last inch or two and get up under it. Tech's going to try a long field goal here. Fourth down, 10 yards. The Jackets have converted their only fourth down of the day, but it was a short one. Only one yard needed there. Brad Chambers. This will be right at 50 yards. It would be the longest of his career with Basquin holding. Ross Mitchell snapping. Spot. Kick is away, and it is good. The kick is good. 
Chambers hits a career best 50 yarder. Georgia Tech trails Georgia 1918 with 501 to go. Quick network message from Athens as you listen to the Georgia Tech Football Network. Turnover. They're marking the field goal at 49 yards, not 50. Nonetheless, it's the best of Chambers' career, surpassing the 47 earlier this year against Virginia. Rodney Williams to kick it away. Bailey and pass deep for Georgia. 5-0-1 to go, and we've got another barn burner between the Dogs and Yellow Jackets. Williams to the football. Rodney high end over end kick. Eight yards deep in an end zone, and Champ Bailey will touch a right knee. Let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification here on the Georgia Tech Football Network. The Falcons can clinch a playoff berth tomorrow. Georgia Tech tries to rally back. Beautiful football weather, sunny and 72 at News Radio, WGST, Atlanta, Canton. So Quincy Carter will bring the Bulldogs back out. First and 10 at their 20. Carter upset a moment ago. Now Kim really has a chance for the last lap if he can continue the drive. 4.54 to go in the football game again. Tech uh, trails Georgia 19-18. Both teams again. Two timeouts apiece. Greer left, small right. Snap to Carter. They'll give it to Gary. And he gets nothing. Got a hole. And a marker goes down. Got a, got a hole, Wes. You refuse it, though? No, you take the penalty. You want to move them back here. Flags up at the 20, holding on Georgia, 10 yards, and put them back to the 10. Even though they get to replay the down, you want to back them up. Let's look at the sideline and see what George O'Leary's calling. He's saying back them up. Ted Roof, former leader of that Black Watch defense, gave the call to Justin Robertson. So the hold on the dogs makes it first and 20. 4.45 to go, two timeouts for both schools. One point game with the dogs and jackets here today at Athens. Nickel in for Tech defensively. Brian Wilkins has come in. Jim, you're right, Tech needs a turnover. Hadn't had one all game. Georgia has had three on Tech. Greer and Small to the left, Champ Bailey to the right. Quincy Carter looking left. Tucks it away. Now in trouble. Fires back. Bailey's got it. 21-yard line. He fumbled it out of bounds. Oh, my heavens. It was there for a heartbeat and then fell out of bounds on the near sideline as Bostic stripped Champ Bailey. It goes out of bounds at the 20. It's second down, 10 from there. Well, Wes, we're back to declining the penalty here. It would have been second and 10 from the 20, but uh, things work out. <laughs> Carter that time had nobody open and uh, no pressure on him as he looked and worked the field, looked to his left and worked all the way back to the right. Bailey had gotten open underneath on the sideline, hit him with a pass, uh, but Bailey, as he was hit, fumbled the ball, but lucky for Georgia, it went out of bounds. Greer and Bailey go to the left. Small here to the right. Carter from a shotgun on the near hash mark, pointing to his left. Snap to Quincy. Dropping back, being pressured, underthrown, incomplete for Tony Small. He had to get rid of it because Big Clay Brooks was bearing down on him again. Tech had pressure on Carter, and you called it, Wes. That's a key to making him throw the ball quickly and not uh, with his feet up under and threw it off balance, threw it short. Good pass rush by Tech, and clock is stopped with the incompletion at 4.15 to go here in the fourth quarter. Georgia, third and 10 from their own 20. Bulldogs, 3 of 11 in third downs. Greer and Small to the left. Bailey to the right. Carter's got Arnott to his left and Gary to his right. From the shotgun, drops back. Quincy, across the middle, incomplete, thrown beyond the reach of Small. Fourth down and 10. Georgia will have to punt. And West Tito Claybrooks once again in the face of Quincy Carter and puts him on the ground. So the pressure from Tech's defensive rush is forcing Carter to throw the ball a little quicker, just a little hair quicker than he really wants to, and they're getting to him a little bit now. Tech should get good field position with this exchange. Charlie Rogers is back at his own 45. Win Cop, who doesn't have a great leg, shouldn't uh, boom one here, and Charlie might have a chance to set up a return. Jackets have got eight to rush. Only set now for the return. Cop hits a nice spiral. He's had an outstanding day. Charlie from the 36, looked for room, chased out of the backfield and slung to the turf at the 30, at the 26 yard line. Turned out to be a big play, unless they bring his forward procedure up to the 30, which they do. So Cop got his best kick, Wes, of the game. 
huge kick. Rogers got off the first man and tried to work away, but uh, the pursuit got him. But the official's going to move forward motion up at the 30. First and 10, 357 to play. Tech is 70 yards away. Outstanding punting day for Wincott. Hamilton sends White to the right, Sheridan to the left. Jeff Harris is on Dez White. Lone set back, Philip Rogers. Jackets work right to left. Here's Hamilton. Booting back here to the left side. Joe's going to keep it. He'll come to the near side, step out of bounds, and pick up nearly six on the play. He may have gotten a full six. Angled out over there by Bailey, Cochran, and Arantis Grant all in the neighborhood. Let's see how they spot this. Right at five and a half, maybe six yards. Let's call it six. Second down four, Kim, at the 36. The naked bootleg with Hamilton faking everybody off and getting outside a contain and wisely pulling the ball down and running for six yards up to the 36. Clock stops as well at 350. High formation now. Give us to Phillip Rogers, trying the left side, 40. Phillip taking on tacklers, 48-yard line. He finally stretches out. Whoa! Philip Rogers explodes into the arms of Kirby Smart and Larry Mann. Goes for a dozen. And a Rogers and Wilder stay in there. White to the right, Sheridan to the left. Offset eye to the left side. Hamilton working from near midfield. Five seconds to snap it. Gets it done. Give it to Philip Rogers. Coming here left side. Midfield took on a block. Down near the 45-yard line of Georgia before Jeff Harris collared him. Rogers, junior corner from Jacksonville. He goes for nearly seven yards on first down. He's does the junior from East Point, Georgia, Philip Rogers. Let's call it seven to the 45. It'll be second down and three from there. In Georgia territory with 2.51 and counting. Kelly Campbell to the right, Dez White in the boundary at the left. Wilder and Rogers stay in the eye. Hamilton on the near hash. Play action coming right. Joe's going to keep it. He'll tuck it under. First down and more. Down to the 31-yard line of Georgia goes Hamilton. He was down on the play before the ball came out. First down, Georgia Tech at the 31 and a half yard line. Hamilton got 14, Kim. He did a smart job tucking it away. Boy, I'm telling you, Joe Ham made some good decisions on this bootleg play. Faked the counter inside and got a rank round contained, but he saw that he had a chance to run, and he did wisely. Got a nice block downfield and got the first down. And as he hit the ground, ball popped loose, but the official on top of it. So Tech's going to take 19, one of their 19 18 with 222 to play. Don't forget tonight, Edgar Trinkets will join Randy Waters for Tech Basketball. The Jackets meeting West Virginia, second round of the Big Island Invitational. We remind you, First Union, proud to support Tech Athletics, First Union, for all of your financial solutions. First and 10 in a one-point game, Kim. West, you go back to 3.30 in the third quarter. Georgia hadn't had a first down since then. Tech has had nine since then. Wishbone. Hamilton sends White wide to the left. Georgia brings Bailey over to cover him man-to-man. -man. First down, Charlie Rogers is dropped for a loss. The play is made by Josh Mallard. Redshirt freshman from Savannah drops Rogers for a loss. Back to the 35-yard line. Clock is running west at 2.03. Tech has one timeout. Plenty of time here. Tech doesn't want to be too much in a hurry. They want to get in field goal range. Got plenty of time to do it. Clock at 154 and running. White left, Sharon and right, offset eye behind Joe. Georgia loads the line. Six guys up here. Here's Hamilton dropping back. Joe steps up in the pocket. He's going to keep it. A lose one tackler. Runs into the arms of Smart. Back near the 32-yard line. Kirby Smart made the stop. Third and a dozen now for Tech. Clock running at 129. Tech there will take their time, Wes. They've got plenty of time. They're not going to panic here. They've got one timeout left, and they want this clock to run because with one more first down, they get in field goal range. Clock at 112 and running. Jackets 5 of 13 and third down. White left, Sheridan and Campbell to the right. Wilder and Rogers in an eye behind Joe Hamilton. Timeout asked for by Georgia Tech. Smart call by Hamilton. Play clock is down to two seconds. So Tech is. calls the timeout. One minute to play, and the play clock had moved down to the final two seconds. 
Well, once again here today, nobody's gone home early. Goes right down to the wire. Last year's game, Tech scored with 52 seconds to go up on Georgia, but Georgia came right back down the field and with eight seconds to go, broke Tech's heart. Mike Bobo threw a touchdown pass. Corey Allen. Corey Allen. Georgia won the game. Here we are, 19 Georgia, 18 Georgia Tech. One minute left. Tech has no timeouts left. Ball is at the Georgia 32. It's third and call it 10 and a half yards for a first down. But Tech doesn't really need to get the 10 and a half yards to get in field goal range. What they must do, though, Wes, without the timeout, which you normally would like here, if they don't get the first down, they've got to be ready to run that kick team out on the field so they don't get lit, caught with a delay of game penalty. If they can get another five, seven yards, that would put the ball somewhere around the Georgia 25 and make it about a 42, 43-yard field goal effort for Brad Chambers. So with a minute left, the ball sitting squarely on the Bulldog 32 on the near hash mark. Charlie Rogers has come in. He's to the left. White and Sheridan to the right. Philip Rogers flanked to just the left side. Georgia looks like they're going to blitz Hamilton here. Rogers in motion to the right. Snap to Hamilton. Drops back out in the flat. Caught Charlie Rogers. 20 inside. Charlie still on his feet looking to get out of bounds. And does so. They stop the clock now with 52 seconds left on a first down. Wes, he didn't get out of bounds, I don't think. I think they're just going to stop the time clock. Ball is at the uh, 19. So Tech did not get out of bounds. They'll start it at 51. Once Now they started it now. It's 49 and running. Tech's going to have to get up to the line and see what they can do now. Now they're going to run the ball maybe one play and then come on and bring Chambers. They'll try to run it probably over to the left maybe. Hamilton's got Wilder and Phillip Rogers behind him in an eye and single receivers left and right. Joe's got a hurry. Play clock at four. Snap. They give it to Phillip Rogers. He runs squarely toward the left side. Now Georgia has banged the timeout. Mickey Matthews. Now the, the clock, clock continuing to run. Did Georgia call the timeout? Matthews signaled for one. Tech's going to stop the clock with a down of the ball right here. And they'll run their kick team on. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Hamilton spikes Stops the ball. Now they got to hurry the team on. they got to hurry them over, West, so they don't get the delay of game. Five seconds left. So on third down and nine yards at the Georgia 18, Brad Chambers has a chance to win the ball game. Timeout, Georgia. And now Georgia calls the timeout that I thought they had asked for a moment ago. The ball is at the 18-yard line on second down and nine. Hamilton simply spiked it to the ground at the 18. On first down, they gave it to Rogers. He went left side, Kim, got right out of yard, and then the old clock play is hauled out. So here we are. It's right here, Wes, and it comes down as it should to the last play of the ball game. Uh, this should be it, and either Tech's going to win it or Georgia, and it's been a real struggle. You, nobody thought this would be a low-scoring affair. Everybody thought that the team that had the ball last would probably win it 49-48 or something, but this has been a defensive struggle today. Tech has turned it over three times. Georgia has turned it over zero times. And that's what has come out. Brad Chambers will attempt a 35 yard field. 35 yards. Ross Mitchell will snap it. Brett Baskin will hold. Georgia takes another timeout. Georgia's called another one. That's their final timeout, so that'll be it as they freeze Chambers once again. Chambers is one of two today. 11 of 19 in his career. He's kicked a career best 49 yards. That one of two today, Kim. Makes him 26 of 39 in his career. One of the best kickers in tech history. And Brad is from not far from here, from Tacoa. And he's got a chance to be remembered forever, Kim. It would be a big one, Wes. Uh, tech makes it. It'd break the seven-year drought, as Georgia referred to Tech's seven-year uh, drought, and if he misses it, he'll be remembered for that one, too, as well, but uh, Tech has got him in position here. The ball is right where he wants it, a little left of center on the left hash, 
five seconds soon as they snap it. This should be the last play. Brett Baskin will hold. Ross Mitchell to snap. Snap. Spot. Kick is away. And it is good! With two seconds left, Georgia Tech has taken the lead on Georgia. 21 to 19. And I want to tell you what. It was cut like a prime rib right down the middle. Whoa. The Jackets. Kim King marched 52 yards in 10 plays. And they do it in three minutes, 55 seconds. And Brad Chambers. From Stevens County High School in Tacoa, kicks a 35-yard field goal. And Wes, if Tech holds on here, which they should with two seconds, this will break the drought. It will run Georgia Tech's record to nine and two, drop Georgia to eight and three, and it will be a remarkable, remarkable turnaround for the ACC Coach of the Year and got to get votes for the National Coach of the Year, George O'Leary. He has beaten the number 14 ranked team if Tech can hold on for two seconds here. I suspect all Rodney Williams is going to do is squib this along the ground. Yeah, they'll make one of the up men try to feel the ball so they run the clock. Williams has got it teed up. Kim, there are five football players in white jerseys and gold britches today that were a part of a 1-10 in, in 1994, and they're getting ready to have one of the sweet memories. I still don't want to rest, Wes, until those two seconds hey, are off the clock. I'm with you on that. I've seen lightning strike before. Rodney Williams to kick it away. He'll go to the football, drive it along the ground. It will be fielded on a high hop. Out there by a bulldog, and being tackled is Earl Chambers, and the streak is over. Brett Basquin made the tackle on Chambers, and Brad Chambers will be remembered now as long as Georgia Tech plays football. Stay tuned. Kim's got the wrap right after this. But first, a network break. The final in Athens is Georgia Tech 21, and them dogs.